One of the local favorites from right here in Iowa City. The first game of the year. The 22nd ranked team in the land underway. From the six yard line, Tavian Banks finds himself an avenue and gets out to about the 28 yard line. A 22 yard return. And Iowa's offense will come out with Matt Sherman, their leader. Matt, number five all time Iowa passer, with Shaw and Berger in the backfield. Chris Knipper's got some big shoes to fill. Scott Slutskers, who's now an Indianapolis Colt. That tight end spot's important. Odoms and Dwight are the wideouts. The captain on the offensive line, Ross Verba, up front. Injuries kept him out of four games last year. He's healthy this year. Reichel, Reardon, Goff, and McKinney round out the front five. And here comes Cedric Shaw. And he got level as he crossed the 30 to the 31. We'll give him a gain of three as Arizona's defense, the double eagle defense, Sloco Greer Salavea is the guy that they look to anchor that Van Tuanay the other one up front Gary talked about Armand Williams he's a whip linebacker you see him in different spots all day Burnett and Sprott the other two backers Chris McAllister a junior college transfer two interceptions last week already in the win over UTEP joins Fitz Smith and Malvo in the secondary for Arizona second down at seven. Damon Gibson has checked in at a wideout spot to the bottom of your screen. But it's Cedric Shaw, the second man, not much at all. And Williams, who we talked about, helps out on the stop along with Salavea. This Arizona defense might not have the big names in the past, but their defensive coordinator, Larry McDuff, told us yesterday they feel they still have the speed and maybe a couple of better corner covers than, than they had in the past. They don't really have to worry about uh, playing zone coverage to one side now. With the additions of McAllister, they really feel that they're solid in the secondary. Third down at five is what Arizona's defense has forced. Two tight end set. You see them both standing in that famed approach for Iowa. Sherman under pressure down the middle, completes it, and immediately hit. McAllister puts the hit on Tim Dwight, and maybe a yard on the pass play. That's it, and Iowa is three and out. They tried to pick going across the ball for Tim Dwight that time. Arizona was able to get underneath the coverage and make the play. Good running man-to-man -man defense by that Arizona secondary, forcing a punt already. Aiden Fry's 18th year here, most games by any Division One coach that he's coached. Nick Galloway, the top punter in the Big Ten, shows why with that move. Oh! Tim Dwight didn't give him enough room, but he sure gave him a headache. You've got to give them six feet, two yards. That was about a yard, Gary, and wow, that's got to sting. Rodney Williams will be remembering this one the rest of the game. Remember Derek Mason last week we did the game for Michigan State. That's how they opened up with punt. Timmy Dwight so aggressive with special teams. Your starting wide receiver, a pretty nice catch there by Williams. Here's with the opportunity inside the two-yard belt. Team. First down. Rodney Williams is going to have to take a wow. blow after that one. He's Absolutely. the starting wide receiver. He's going to have to get off. Gary Taylor, their all-purpose back over 100 yards last week. Miles, the fullback. Brady Batten is the quarterback. Richard Dice back after an injury field 95. Lucky's the tight end. Williams is lucky to be alive. Middleton, their left tackle, and Willie Walker have switched spots on the left side. Wyatt Watson and Portia. And now penalty flags all over the place. Before the first snap offensively for the Wildcats. Prior to the snap, full start, and five yards, still first. It'll be first and 15 after we check in with Adrian. Well, Brad, I can tell you after watching warm-ups, we're going to see the earliest impact of Homer Smith first, right up front on his offensive line. You know, these guys up front a year ago were green. Well, here they come now a year later, more experienced, bigger, stronger. Best example, big Frank Middleton. He said, look, I'm the vocal leader of this group. If we don't get the job done up first, and they didn't right there, Homer Smith's offense will not be effective. Great point, Adrian. They didn't right there. Middleton down to 311 pounds, if you can believe that on the left side. Defensively for Iowa in the 50 front. Bill Ennis Inge is their captain up front, 12 sacks a year ago. Ortley, Klein, DeVries, and Chambers in that five-man group. Matt Hughes, pressure's on him to replace Bobby Di Diaco, their leading tackler last year. Plez Atkins led the Big Ten with six interceptions, joining Knight, Cooks, and Robinson. Counter with Taylor. Big room for him and a first down run out to the 40 yard line. Matt Hughes had to track him down. But as we said, Gary Taylor, who had over 100 yards last week, picks up 19 in a hurry there. 
If there's one thing Bill Tomey's looking for in their offense is some big plays. In the past, he has not been able to produce them. Gary Taylor is not your breakaway threat. He's not going to take it the distance. He gets you those seven, eight yards. But if he can pick up first downs like that, I think they'll be satisfied. Kevin Schmidtke checks into the backfield for Taylor, who had the long run. First down, Wildcats. Batten wants to throw a screen and does. Charles Miles, he took a big hit. Vernon Rollins that time number 56 is the linebacker he's the special player on this defense that's going to have to put, replace Bobby Diaco on all those tackles a lot of guys saying who's going to be the breakout guy for the Iowa defense a lot of his teammates said watch Vernon Rollins well he had 100 tackles last year so he is the top returning man in that category Diaco led him for two or three years in a row and now is a grad assistant coach here Iowa second down flags down as Miles Maybe got a yard, first man through, the fullback. But again, penalty markers all over the place. Last week, Arizona only had one penalty, and if this is against them, they've got a couple already. Right to the snap, full start on the offense. Still second down. That is the second time in this game that the crowd has caused a, a false start for that uh, Arizona offensive line. It, it is a home field advantage. Hayden Fry knows that. He takes advantage of every little thing he can around here, including, as everyone knows, painting the visitors' locker in the paint to kind of give them that little <laughs> sleepy look, that That's calming right. look. Second down and nine. Three wide out group now. For Brady Batten, they all go out to the right side as Jeremy McDaniel joins Dyson Williams, who's back in there after being shaken up on that punt return. Batten slips in his drop and drops in his tracks. And it's Jared DeVries, who really was a force last year. He tied in a singe with 12 sacks a year ago. He has his first one of 96. DeVries is the come on player for that defense that really turned it around a year ago. This is a guy that came out of high school as a high school running back. Put on 50 pounds <laughs> since he's come to Iowa. One of those guys that can run up front, just a sophomore. He is going to be their man up front that can get tackles for a loss and sacks. They lost there, and it's third down 15. Iowa shows blitz, they bring it. Play action, Batten's in trouble. Down he goes again, back to back sacks. This time it's Brett Chambers. And Dick Tomey looks out as his offense picked up one first down and then got throttled in the other direction. I don't even believe anyone even blocked Chambers that time coming from the blind side. That's a dangerous formula. Don't block the guy into the blind side of the quarterback. Iowa's offense gave up 31 sacks a year ago in 1995. They thought they had that solved. They won't solve it if they don't block outside linebackers. Matt Payton to punt. Banks and Dwight are back for Iowa. Nice kick. Tim Dwight camps under it. He'll have a chance from the 18. Straight up the middle. He got a great block from his teammate. And he got it out for an 11-yard pickup. 53-yard punt. But Dwight gets Iowa good field position there on offense when we come back. ESPN's presentation of college football is brought to you by Jeep, makers of the new Jeep Grand Cherokee, Cherokee and Wrangler. Right across from the Iowa River, the center of student activity, Iowa Memorial Union, place to be any time of day. Normally, that's my path for jogging. I didn't make it out there yesterday. Cedric Shaw, not jogging, sprinting to the outside, and he got about 10. David Fipp. Had to uh, wrestle him out of bounds. Cedric Shaw, as Gary mentioned, already the all-time leading rusher in Hawkeye history. Cedric Shaw's goal today, I think, is to make sure the other Cedric remains the other Cedric <laughs> over there at Cedric Michigan Urban, State. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> Shaw, that rare combination of a guy who can physically attack you, yet has the 4-4 speed to run around you. He's one the scouts, the pro scouts, will love to place in their backfield here for now. He's picked up some weight and muscle over the last couple of years, but hasn't lost any speed. Nice combination. Sherman fires outside, intended for Dwight, too far outside. Nice start for John Cooper's troops. It's not going to be rice a day, I don't think. It's <laughs> just got a feeling yeah. that, that the rice is going to be done in a couple minutes. Uh -huh. Minute rice. Second down, 10. Sherman, draw play, Shaw. Had one man to beat. 
did beat that one man, but spun into some more Wildcats after a pickup of about three. Ross Verba, the only veteran lineman this time for Ohio, comes across and blocks about how you're taught to block. Watch Verba right here come across on this play and just kick out the end man on the line of scrimmage this time. Sloco. Inside out, those linebackers make the play, but Verber really came across. Ross Verber with a barbed wire there around the right bicep that Hayden Price says are the biggest arms he's ever seen in 35 years <laughs> of coaching. <laughs> Third down and eight. Sherman goes down, and it was McAllister on a corner blitz that got to him from the outside. So McAllister's made two big plays already in this game. It is really the play of 1996 is to come off that short corner and when you're able to come off the corner, as you see the bottom of your screen, and no one turns out, you just have no one to throw to in that situation. They're playing zone coverage behind it. Don't want to belabor the point, but last week, Michigan State made a living off of that play. The gallery doesn't get all of this kick at all. Takes a bounce in his favor and goes out inside the 20, right at the 20, as a matter of fact. That's where Arizona's offense will have it when we come back. Scoreless game in Iowa City. After 38 years in the business and 13 jobs, sometimes you just rub your brow and say, okay, now what do we do? That's Homer Smith, the first-year offensive coordinator for Arizona. Been a lot of different places and uh, has shown offense to a lot of different people. This year, Arizona with multiple looks, as you see, they'll work from the shotgun here and bat. To take it. It's Keith Smith, excuse me. He's going to take it straight ahead. He's the more mobile of the two quarterbacks. We expected to see both, but we thought we'd see Smith in short yardage situations or near the goal line to start things off. Homer Smith, uh, with 30-some uh, years of coaching, has coached a lot of different guys. This time he's going to give a little bit of a two-quarterback look at the Iowa Hawkeye defense with Batten on the sideline this series and Smith in the game. Smith can run the option. I would not be shocked to see it. They did not show much offense last week. As Adrian talked about earlier, very vanilla look that they gave Iowa. They didn't, they didn't show much against UTEP. Gary Taylor trying to go wide. He goes across the 25, give him four, where it'll be third down and a long four coming up. And a man down is Frank Middleton, who Adrian talked about earlier. He is their key offensive lineman, the senior left tackle out of Beaumont, Texas. Shaking up, oh man, shaking up on a play. I, that's just frustration right there. A guy who worked so hard lost 80 pounds to get ready for this football season and now maybe with a slip in a knee or a twisted ankle he sees all that dieting and all that hard maybe work all that hard work going down at one time and at what usually happens in those situations is a lineman falls on it let's see if we can find out what happens this time to frank middleton as you see him laying in pain on the sideline let me just Frank Middleton, number seven. Oh, he got three. rolled up he from behind. Rolled up from behind, and that's what happens. It was Aaron Klein, the linebacker, who accidentally rolled up on the back of Frank Middleton's knee. And we'll check on Frank when we return. No score here in Iowa City. Well, he runs behind a huge offensive line, which is what Arizona Mike was trying to do behind Frank Middleton, their left tackle, who just moved out from left guard, which is where he played last year when he started eight games. And it'll be Turley now, Ryan Turley, to take his spot in the lineup. You saw Frank come off under his own power, but a big fellow with tears in his eyes and a serious amount of pain after nose tackle Aaron Klein accidentally rolled up on that leg. Batten back in there. Now he's trying to get first down yardage and may have at the 30 yard line but Iowa's defense making them scramble for yardage let's check in with Adrian Karsten eh? Brad it is an unconfirmed injury to his right knee at this point now if they lose Middleton for the game this would be a huge loss yes certainly the vocal leader of this group he said he took sole responsibility for the fact that the Wildcats did not go to a bowl game last year point is yeah Iowa came back or rather I uh, Iowa Hawkeyes came back into this game with all their specialists and Arizona came back with all their beef point is if they lose this guy at about 320 pounds it's a big loss yep. Close eye on him. And as Adrian says, is a huge loft. He's 320 pounds, but a year ago he played at 390. <laughs> Actually lost 71. Would, last pounds. year it would have been a huge loss, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> 
First down. Batten on the scramble. Moves the change right at the 30. The Wildcats tailor the tailback. Play action to him. Batten loads it. Deep sideline for his tight end. Got him. And still running. Plez Atkins has to battle all he can to get Metzler out of bounds. A lot of tight ends in this football game that are going to catch some passes, but this is a really pretty designed play right here. Batten puts it high to the outside against zone defense. Usually, Plez Atkins will have a safety that comes over and helps him in this situation, but for some reason, he did not have help. Tried to go for the steal a couple times. Metzler just did not have anything to do with that. And there's another one of those big plays that Bill Tony's looking for right now to get in this football team. 54 yards worth of a big play, a career long for Metzler. Now it's Taylor off the right side inside the 15. Got a couple. It'll bring up second down and eight. Rollins, the linebacker, in on the hit. Seems with the Iowa Hawkeyes, they, we look, talked about those runs they have had on this football team. They started out 5-0, and they lost four straight games. They come back so hard at the end of that year. But that Washington Bowl game, a lot of people don't know how much to make of it. Of course, the fans are saying we're for real, but sometimes those bowl games can be a little deceiving, Brad. It was for Arizona. That year they shut out Miami, came back ranked in the preseason polls number one the next year, and then they sort of laid an egg. Nice snap. There's going to be a quarterback draw, I think, all the way for Batten. Got down to the 11-yard line. When you don't have a great running back, you have to involve your quarterback in the running game. And that's what Homer Smith is doing with both Batten and Smith, who are both more mobile than Danny White was a yeah. year ago when they had 31 sacks on this football team. The other thing you have to do when you're a shotgun team that Homer Smith likes to use the shotgun in, play, in passing plays, you have to show you can run from that formation. That means the quarterback has to do something. Taylor and Scooter Sprott will flank Batten here on a third down and five. Big play for the Iowa defense after the long pass play to Metzler, the tight end. And here is the draw out of the shotgun, and it's Taylor, and he's short of the first down. We knew we'd see that some. I'm not so sure the previous play wasn't maybe supposed to be that because Batten had a little indecision before he ran with it. Anyway, they come back with Taylor trying to pick up the first down, and it's fourth and about two. A little too, bit, little too far to go for it in this situation. Put three points on the board, get your crowd out of the game a bit, and uh, have your team feeling good about themselves early in this football game. Matt Payton already three for four on the season after his performance against UTEP last week, and Arizona's going to be forced to take a timeout here. And, and the reason is because they lost Frank Middleton, who would probably be on this field goal team, and there's some confusion as to whose spot and who has to shift around. So they'll straighten that out, and with Frank still on the Arizona bench, gives us a chance to tell you that coming up later today, in waiting for him, Colorado State in Colorado, the nightcap on the deuce. Boy, that's tough. Yeah, just... <laughs> All it all that right work, there. all that preparation, Camp Coach Cheese out there in the middle of the desert trying to get ready. Passed up all those midnight snacks. And now you're sitting on the sideline. And hopefully, you know, the sign that he walked off and that he did have a knee brace on it prior to the injury, maybe it's just something right. that will, you know, just a twinge and he'll get back and be able to play again this game. And if not, then it's game the season. Down. Switched around maybe now. That's, maybe that's why the timeout was. I taken. don't. I don't think so. They had their field goal team out, but now Keith Smith is in the game. They will run option football like Damian Craig at Auburn. They're going to play do a lot of different things. Two tight end set. Taylor the tailback. One wide out to McDaniel. It is Smith on a fourth and two at quarterback for the Wildcats. Here comes the option. Oh, he he lost the ball. And either way, Iowa will take over here. So gamble. Doesn't pay off for Dick Tillman. And the Hawkeyes will have the football on offense. Charles Miles, the fullback, and Keith Smith, the quarterback, on that exchange, a fake of an exchange that time. Bobbled the ball just a bit. I don't know if Miles tried to grab it or just got it caught up in his jersey, but Smith never got it out of the fake, and it was disaster after that. 
Check in with Adrian Karsten. Brad, out of 12 fourth down situations against UTEP, Arizona went for it four times. A third of the time and, uh, they converted on only three. Talk to coach before the game. He says, if we got a chance to go for it and get it on fourth down, we will. Good work. Yep. With all due respect to the Miners, I was maybe a little bit better. <laughs> they think so anyway. First down just outside the eight yard line. Shaw. Wide. Puts his head down, shows his speed, but a flag flies into the fray at the 15 yard line. I don't know if we had a late holding call on that sweep. Head lineman that time made that call late, very late. It probably was a holding on the back that time, blocking the end man on the line of scrimmage. Gonna be a clip. Wow, that was really strange. So that'll back Iowa up, and it gives us a chance to check in with Mike Tirico. Michael? The Peppa and the Rice. Wow, huge game already. Pepper Johnson comes through for that. Peppy Johnson comes through for that football team. You know, that is a scary thought. They they have a team that can really roll up the yard. I'm excuse me, Pepper uh, Peppy Pearson. You got Pepper Johnson and <laughs> Peppy Le Pew, and you got it all working there. <laughs> we haven't done our study for Ohio State yet. <laughs> well, the clip takes it back to the seven-yard line. And that's just about a yard deeper than the original line of scrimmage. Everybody, everybody wondered if this desert swarm defense was still there. So far, so good. Yep. Gibson and Dwight both flip to the right side there. Dwight, the slot man, will go in motion. First down, 11. Shaw dances right into the tackler. And you talk to Larry McDuff, the defensive coordinator for Arizona, about what he's trying to accomplish with his so-called double eagle defense, desert swarm defense. He said he's trying to plug the inside gaps and bounce it outside where he thinks he has better speed from the linebacker spot to run it down. And he's had a lot of success doing that with this defense. Second down and 10 as Shaw comes out. Tavian Banks checks in behind Berger, the fullback. It'll be near his own goal line if he passes. Throws on the roll to Dwight. Tim Dwight trying to get to the sticks. Uh, I don't know. Looks like he got there, maybe. Mikhail Smith put the hit on him, but Tim, the local favorite from here in Iowa City, got 11 and a first down. Got a big kick out of Matt Sherman yesterday, Brad. We're talking to him. The last game that I did with Sherman was five interception game against Illinois, uh -huh. where they everybody thought it was all over for Matt. He says, Gary, if I throw five interceptions tomorrow, I'm walking right off the field. <laughs> I said, with Ryan Driscoll behind you, you might not have a chance to throw. That's right. <laughs> you might walk all the way back to St. Angsger, Iowa. I suppose the whole town is here watching him play, so it might be a ghost down there today, too. Three minutes left, first quarter, no score, and there's Driscoll on the sideline. Sherman on the field with a first down and a nice play fake, but he got some pressure, and down he goes. Daniel Greer, nice back-to-back -back plays in this series for Greer defensively. The offensive line was the big question mark for the Iowa football team coming into it. A lot of people said if this offensive line, which is fairly new, four new starters, if you include the tight end, just got a passing grade. This would be an A-plus offense. So far, they're not passing. They have not been able to control the line of scrimmage in the run game. And so far in the passing game, there's been pressure on Sherman. They haven't tried to go to Knipper, the tight end, yet at all either. That's normally a big part of their offense, but he's bringing it that spot. Here's Shaw, toss sweep, got some pressure in the backfield. That was played beautifully. Ball loose. Arizona says they have it. We talked about the whip linebacker, number 37. They do have it, yes. You got it. They knew all along. Kale Smith, number 28, is the guy that got it. The guy who made the play, though, Armand Williams, number 37. Watch him come off the line of scrimmage. Unblocked, inside out, a linebacker who was at the line of scrimmage makes the play, forces him inside, and then the backside pursuit comes in and strips the ball. Ironically enough, the spot where Arizona's offense fumbled, the eight-yard line, is where their defense gets it back for them. First and goal from the eight for Arizona. Rodney Williams, the lone wide receiver. Miles and Schmitke behind.
Ryan Batten who's trying to change the play and the Iowa fans aren't allowing it. Batten almost ran into his tailback, got some pressure and throws it for his tight end, but he threw it away. Metzler, who had the big gain earlier, the intended receiver, but Brady Batten just said, let's get this one out of here. What a beautiful job by the Iowa secondary that time, a veteran secondary, in baiting Batten into calling an audible. After he made the call, they backed off into a zone look. Batten had nowhere to throw the ball, a wasted play, second down. And goal from the eight. That's Ron Holmes, the single wide receiver. Two tight end set. That's Metzler set up as an H back on the left side. Here's the give. Schmitke. Schmitke, nice game. Out of the turf. Wanted to get in the end zone. Came up about a yard and a half short. Junior out of Tucson. Schmitke is a guy who's uh, pat backing up Gary Taylor this time, who's lost some weight since a year ago. Said he wanted to get a little bit quicker, dropped six, eight pounds, hits the holes a little bit better. He said, I want it six. <laughs> Remember that game a couple of years ago as a true freshman we had on ESPN against Georgia Tech? He had a huge game. Yep. Third down, just outside the one yard line. A little surprise, Keith Smith is not in the game. Maybe, it, maybe it's a passing play. Batten stays in there at quarterback. They still go option, and they don't get it. And there was nobody to option to, though, Brad. It was a one-back backfield that time, so it was just a plunge fake, and uh, Iowa defense was ready for it. Well, they went on fourth and two earlier. Did they go on fourth and goal from the one here? Yep. Here comes Gary Taylor back into the backfield. So Dick Tomey's going to go for the second time here in the first quarter. It's amazing how those fumbled plays by the backup quarterback changes your thinking about how you're going to handle a <laughs> two-quarterback system when you're in that goal line or short yard situation. And the Hawkeyes come up with another goal line type stand. Keith Smith now has checked in at the quarterback spot. Musical chairs at quarterback. Smith doesn't like the looks of things. Calls a timeout, Arizona. And it was really the time clock that time. Only had two seconds left. Batten was very aware of it that time. Keith Smith, excuse me, very aware of it that time. Called a timeout and saved five yards. We'll come over to talk to Dick Tomey. And the word coming down from upstairs from Homer Smith. Homer Smith has complete autonomy running this offense this year. Dick Tomey has said that he has great confidence in him, has coached under Homer Smith in the past, and uh, feels that just give him the thing. He's called plays more than anyone, feels confident in him. He's looked like Johnny Rogers out there. It's amazing how those same plays and those same quickness doesn't look as good against Nebraska as it did against <laughs> Purdue with them. Everybody in Michigan all last week was wondering how good is Michigan State. Of those three rushes last week for Keith Smith, you see one of them was for a touchdown against UTEP in a very similar situation. Fourth down, just outside the one. The Iowa fans come to life for their defense. Smith throws, touchdown to Metzler, the tight end. Make it Lucky, the tight end. Mike Lucky. What a nice play. Lucky almost fell down that time. A plunge fake. Those Iowa Hawkeye inside linebackers attack the fake. Lucky keeps his feet. Touchdown. Nice call. Well, they were gutsy twice. This time it pays off. This time was the same fake that they fumbled. Little jump pass. When you're five foot eleven, like Keith <laughs> Smith is, you use the jump pass. Hope somebody clicks a picture of it. You know, remember those old football cards? That's right. <laughs> up in midair with one hand out in front of you. Peyton, extra point is up and good. Mike Lucky rolls a lucky seven, actually six plus one. It's seven nothing Arizona. And again, they get down close. They give the look as though they're going to show option with their option of the two quarterbacks in, and yet come up fire into the tight end. The tight end's got them two biggest plays of the day for their offense. Both of them, Metzler and Lucky this time. Watch the inside linebackers for the Iowa Hawkeyes. They are going to attack this ball, and that's really what makes it go, is attacking the football as we up here did not see the replay very well. We had some technical difficulties, but it was a situation that on the goal line, fourth and short, everybody's geared in to stop that play and then pop it over their head for the touchdown. Mike Lucky had a couple of starts last year, only caught five passes all season long, but his first one of 96 is good for a touchdown. Peyton now tee it up. Tim Dwight will walk back 
Here's own goal line. Dwight also with the barbed wire around the bicep. That's the going <laughs> tattoo here. That's how you keep the cows out of the corn in Iowa, Gary. Dwight from the goal line. Whoa, nice hurdle job and got out to the 20. Got what he could. 20 yard return. PGA Tour's newest marketing juggernaut, Tiger Woods, in his second tournament as a pro, the Bell Canadian Open from Oakville, Ontario, coming up following our ball game at 4 o'clock Eastern. Then tomorrow we'll have the final round starting at 5. Is Tiger, it, I guess, is what, four under? Is it the, is it the juggernaut for the tour or is it in promotion to juggernaut? I don't know. It's both, I, I guess. <laughs> he shot a couple of 70s, didn't he? Four under so far. Here, Iowa seven under to Arizona. Sherman in trouble again. This defense of Arizona's looks pretty good, or at least enough to confuse the Iowa offensive front. And that time Mike Sloco gets in there. This was an all or nothing play this time for Sherman to Demo Odoms and Kelly Melville to the outside didn't bite. Watch Sherman throw, it's a hitch and go. Big fake right there, nothing there. Now, Sherman can't readjust, just does not have enough time to throw the ball to anyone else. Another sack. Second down and 13. The speed of the Arizona defense has been the difference so far in this game. Arizona had only one sack last week in their opener. And quarter comes to a close. So Matt Sherman will talk it over. Dick Tomey on the road. His team in front of Hayden Fries at the end of 15. First quarter complete in Iowa City. Arizona, seven. The Hawkeyes, nothing. Back at Kelly Stadium, Arizona leads the hometown Hawkeyes of Iowa. Seven of these. We start the second quarter. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, and Adrian Karsten with you. Second down and 13 coming up from Matt Sherman on the Iowa offense. He looks left and goes out there. Wide receiver screen that screened nothing, really. <laughs> Man, reading that was Mikhail Smith, who's made a couple of big plays in his ball game, and he was all over it. Very interesting look that time, and I think the looks have this Iowa offense really confused. They had the strong safety, Mikhail Smith, that time out there with a wide receiver, and uh, everybody seemed to be discombobulated on that Iowa offense as the who to block. When you throw a quick screen out wide, and get nothing from it. You're really searching offensively. Hayden Fry has not got a handle on this defense yet. They lost three yards on the pass play. It's third down and 16. Fabian Banks in a tailback. Arizona shows blitz and they'll bring it on Sherman. Look out. Got a nice block and completes the pass out to Demo Odoms, but well short of the first down out to the 24. And it's a punting situation for Iowa. Adrian. Brad, it's as if uh, Gary was right down here on the sidelines with me listening in. Particularly the young guys up front really are frustrated because there's so many different defensive looks. They move late. They don't know who to block every single time they come to the ball. That's why they got a punt right now. All right. And it will be the gallery in. Ooh, we got some heat that time. Rodney Williams he got tattooed earlier on a punt return. Has some room to work with this one. Had a pretty good hit again, but he got seven on the return. Richard Carter on the special teams made the stop. This is the best starting field position of the day for Arizona. Up a touchdown, seven to nothing. As you see, Ohio State running all over. Peppy Pearson running all over Rice so far. Clemson trying to rebound from being throttled by North Carolina in their opener. The Mountaineers by a field goal. Here, seven nothing. Arizona in front. Brady Batten at quarterback as we'll continue to watch the signal callers today for the Wildcats as they've been shuttling those two spots. Timeout taken by the Cats. We'll take one as well. Arizona leads seven nothing. 13:40 to go first half. ESPN's presentation of college football is brought to you by the new dog. We're thinking ahead and by Burger King, where you can get your burgers worth. Now I like that hat on the right. It's nice. <laughs> Starburst type. Mm -hmm. Sprott with a catch in front of Tom Knight and a pickup of about eight on first down. I might have said earlier that this was the best starting field position for Arizona. I forgot about the change of possession down at the eight yard line that led to their touchdown. But right now they sit 
directly on the midfield stripe here at Kinnick Stadium, and they lead 7-0 over Iowa. I have to believe people in Arizona are saying, is this the offense that I remember? <laughs> Taylor off the left side, and we might have the first down. Harry Cooks made the tackle. Homer Smith runs a multiple offense. He has coached everything in his career, but what you will see from Homer Smith is a com complex look, a lot of substitutions, a lot of formations, people in motion, and then a lot of the same plays from those different looks. Not only have Dick Tomey and Homer Smith coached against each other over the years, but he said, no, you know, we were on the same staff at Davidson, and uh, he said, Homer <laughs> fired me twice. Yeah, he, he had a good laugh. I said, what did you do, hire him to, do, to get back at him? And he just laughed. <laughs> Tommy really keeps his football team loose on a game day. I really was impressed with the way they came out yesterday. Kind of laughed about the pink locker room. I said, is the early start going to mean anything? He said, heavens, we'll be ready to play. Yes, they are. <laughs> yes, they are. They were ready to play before the game when the All-American baton twirler for Iowa came out to midfield and the whole Arizona team surrounded her and yeah. drew some serious boos from the fans here. Got the crowd into the game early. Yeah. That's what you do. <laughs> So it is a first down at the 48-yard line of Iowa. Three wide receivers set this time for Batten. Most of their throwing has been to their tight end. This time he wanted to throw and gets back and gets what he can before he's put down after a gain of about a yard. Like the, what was it, 52-10 last year? Something like that. Boy, we thought we saw pretty good from Michigan State team last year. He might have. Maybe we did. <laughs> Second and nine. Draw play. Sprock and Scooter. Scoots for another first down, it appears. Pick up of 10. And it's in, in on the tackle. Really interesting play that time from Arizona. They pull the offside tackle run a draw play to the same side. Usually you follow with the back to that side. This time Scooter followed him. It was a pretty interesting play. Homer Smith again pulling out all the stops. And a first down at the 37 of Iowa. Crowd is hushed here at Kinnick Stadium about what's happening. That'll help him a little bit as that draw play went nowhere. Vernon Rollins and Matt Hughes meet at the running back. Those two, the linebackers expected to pick up where Bobby Diaco left off. Guy who was undersized, under speed, and always around the football. Talk about all the experience Homer Smith has. Bobby Elliott is in his first year as a defensive coordinator. He had been on the staff before as defensive backfield coach. Took a year off, and he's back calling the shots. Second down at 14. Straight drop, blitz coming, and Batten goes down. Ennis Inge actually wasn't a blitz because Bill comes from that side in a regular position. And as he points to the sky, I'm sure that was uh, for Bill Sr., his father, who passed away this past spring. And he says he's kind of playing the season for dad. And he comes in and gets his first sack of the year. Ryan Turley, the backup that's in the game this time because Middleton is out, just did not get off on the snap count in time. If you give Inge just a split second of a head start, you'll never make the play. 12 sacks a year ago. He and DeVries were tied in that category, and they each have one today. Third down at 21 now. Arizona's batting loads. It's got a man open and hit it. Nice throw. And a first down to Ron Holmes at the 26-yard line. Iowa dropped into the zone, thought they had everybody in front of them that time, but Tom Knight was the corner to that side. Kerry Cooks the safety, and Patton put a ball exactly where you have to throw the ball to the outside of that split too deep zone, just high enough so that corner can't get it, and not too high so the safety can. You gotta love it when it's third and 21 and you get 23 yards, huh? Well, you, you love it if you're a Wildcat fan. If you're a defensive coordinator, that is gonna be driving you crazy. Inside blitz this time. Oh. Pays up. Miles lost the football, and Iowa's got it. And it's in a cinch. He might point to the heavens again. Two big plays for Bill on this series, and Iowa's got the football back. 
probably as safe a play as you can run. An inside handoff that time. The ball bobbled. It did not look smooth. Laid down on the floor, and after a big play, a big turnover this time. Charles Miles, I don't know if it was stripped that time inside out, but nevertheless, a turnover. Arizona by a touchdown, but Iowa with the ball back with 9.53 to go first half. Today's Discus Athletic Students of the Game from Arizona, Center Matt Wyatt, a senior in philosophy and business administration with a 3.95. And from Iowa, Matt Reichel. This guy will go in and argue with a professor if he gets an A because he thinks he deserves an A+. Plus. He's pretty <laughs> smart, 4-0 in business. Discus Athletic, proud to donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund on behalf of those two student athletes. The other offensive lineman for Iowa, so we had to kind of bring Reichel into the group. He's so smart. He should know better than to play offensive line, but we've had to rough him up a little. First down after Ennis Inge with a fumble recovery. Airborne for Cedric Shaw. I got a guard. Sloco came in the defensive end spot. Larry McDuff has said he has simplified this Desert Swarm defense in the last couple, three years. In 93, they were the best rushing defense in college football average, just giving up 30 yards a game. In 94, 65 yards a game, but last year they gave up 127 yards a game. He says, we've got simpler, and we've decided to run from sideline to sideline. That should make us better. Second down, a long eight. Blitz coming, draw play to Shaw, big opening. He ran into his own lineman, now cuts outside, and does pick up the first down. Had he not run into one of his own roadblocks, I think he might have had a big gainer there. I think it was McKinney that he ran into, number 68, Jeremy McKinney, that I thought he was going to just sprint into the secondary that time, and he did bump into him. The blocking assignments confused the Arizona defense this time. Armand Williams, number 37, doesn't even see the ball that time. He runs into McKinney, and I thought he was in the secondary that time and going to make a big play. The Hawkeyes, who have been struggling with just 40 yards total offense, didn't get there. Shaw goes off and wonders what could have been had his backside lineman not pulled him <laughs> right, right into his path. First down at any rate for Iowa, the 48 yard line. Tim White in motion. Toss sweep to Tavian Banks. And Banks got a great block and got the corner. Nice one two punch, Gary, when you can give Shaw a breather and bring in number 22, huh? Hayden Fry calls him the best backup running back he's ever had. We have to find as good as Shaw is. We have to find a way to get him on the line of scrimmage. See Greg Knipper right, Chris Knipper right here, the tight end, number 81, does a great job of blocking his end of the man linebacker that time and turning it at that stand up position. A lot of people say you can't block, but as Hayden Fry says, all you have to do is dance with him. You don't have to knock him down. <laughs> Second down, one. Timeout taken by Sherman. With 9.01 remaining first half. Iowa trailing by a touchdown, but only 48 yards away from the Wildcat end zone. Arizona in front of Iowa, 7-0. Pac-10, Big Ten battle here at Kinnick Stadium with 9.01 left in the half, but Iowa in the Wildcats into the field now. Second down and short, less than a yard to go at the 48-yard line of Arizona. Bank stays in there at the tailback spot. No wideouts except Tim Dwight lined up in a full house backfield right now. Now they split out the tight end. And play action. Sherman wants it all for Dwight on the sideline. It went right through his hand. Cannot throw it any better than that. Wow. He ran what you would call a wheel route out into the flat, looked back, and then right down the sideline following his tight end who cleared out the area that time, Flemister. That's a rope from the backfield. He goes out out of your screen. Sherman, no one in his face, throws, as you called it, a rope right into his hands. And that one, a real nice gamble by Hayden Fry that time because he knew he could come back on third or fourth down and pick up the first down. Here is the third down call. That's Tavian Banks for the first down to the 40 yard line. Salavea makes the tackle as we check in with Mike Tirico. 
I thought Joe Hamilton was supposed to be the runner of the two quarterbacks for Georgia Tech. And the Shaw gets it down. Here we got a first down for Iowa at the 40. Trailing by a touchdown. Straight drop, quick drop by Sherman. Oh! Diving interception. No, he trapped it. Mikhail Smith, who's had several big plays in this game, almost snared that Matt Sherman area. Matt Sherman misjudged Mikhail Smith's speed that time, getting underneath the throw to Demo Odoms. Watch Mikhail turn that way. That is always dangerous for a quarterback to do, is throw the same direction that a defensive back is running. You always like to throw off their back shoulder, not their front shoulder in that situation. Mikhail Smith un ran underneath it, but the ball did hit the ground. Second down and 10. Jard Carter in at one of the wide receiver spots now for Iowa. And in motion, the nipper is tied in. Draw play to Banks, nothing doing. Daniel Greer off that front. Makes the stop. Mike Sloco, Brad, number 44, also came from the outside. Starting his first game, what they've done is flop Van Tune and inserted Mike Sloco to the left side defensive end position. And he just blew that play up in the backfield and allowed the backside pursuit to make the play. That is the type of defense that Larry McDuff is talking about when he says, we want to bounce the play outside. So they're going to attack with those defensive ends and let the linebackers who play very deep in this defense clean up the play. Eighth play of the Iowa drive. The problem is it's third and 15. Sherman pressured again. Got away from the pressure from Sloco and now goes down in a heap at about the 42 yard line. Chester Burnett came up to make the hit and fourth down coming up for Iowa. Matt Sherman, who has such high hopes for this football season, has not been able to get on track in this game. He threw that strike to Timmy Dwight, but overall, the Arizona secondary has taken the big play receivers out of the game. Looks like he misses Slutsker, doesn't he? Out about that. Brian Hurley in to try to pooch punt this thing. There was no one even back. And it's going to pay off beautifully. Down at the two yard line. I don't understand that. I think that's really a gamble. You just let someone come down there and down it. 7 0 3. Remaining in the half, Arizona by a touchdown. Arizona's had great field position all day. The 25 plays they've run, 14 of them have been in Iowa territory. This one's almost in their own end zone, though, so it's quite the opposite from the two after the punt. And the Iowa defense come up with a big play. Fumble in the end zone. Well, it's a safety or a touchdown. <laughs> One of the two. Give us a call, Dick Honig. The referee trying to unpile bodies. Touchdown! And that even more underscores, I think, a mistake on that special teams call when they put 11 men in the line of scrimmage and just let Gallery just pooch it over their heads for terrible field position. They follow that exchange again with the fullback and the quarterback. I don't know. He was trying to hand it off to the fullback that time, Sprott, and I think Sprott thought he was going to fake it to him that because that was completely out of sync that time. Sprott didn't have any idea he was getting the ball. Vernon Rollins will be on the bottom of the pile, number 56. You see him scoping in on that football and scrounging around for six. That was down there, but he's going to lose that fight every time. That's right. You, story. you can see Sprout that time. He says, I didn't know I was supposed to get it, or if I did, it never touched me. Great. He's going, well, I don't understand that. And I says, I, I called it that way. <laughs> well, the discussion can go on for weeks. The fact is, Iowa is an extra point by Zach Robert away from tying the game up here with just under seven minutes to go in the half. Ryan Driscoll, the backup quarterback to hold. Play of the Iowa defense has tied things up at Kennick Stadium. Well, more like the play of the Arizona offense on that uh, play. When you drop a quarterback, fullback, either exchange or fake on your own one yard line, that is a disaster and it proved too big. Let's go back, as you said, the play that led to that was an uncontested pooch punt by Hurley as Arizona had all 10 men up on the line of scrimmage and nobody back, and that allowed Iowa to down the ball to the two yard yeah. line. 
really didn't understand that call, but again, looking at the fumble, you'll see Sprott not expecting the ball, or if he does, it does not get to the pocket. Another thing that really looked as you watch it again in the replay situation is that exchange happened very close to the line of scrimmage. And you're taught as a quarterback to get that ball deep to the fullback if you're going to hand it to him. So that was messed up from the beginning. So Dick Tomey has had one gamble pay off on a fourth and one. A smart hit the tight end. Lucky for the touchdown. I don't know if you call what they did on the special teams a gamble or not, but it ends up looking that way. It's not like where they kept their defense and put it in and played defense looking for a fake. They had an 11-man up look, and that was a little bit odd. So tie game now. As early will kick. McAllister and Holmes back deep. It will be McAllister from a yard in. Brings it out. He took a big hit at the 22 and scooted out to the 26, maybe the 27 yard line. Nice run back by McAllister. And Gary Danielson and Adrian Karsten. Brad Nessler with you from Iowa City, where the game is now tied at seven. Just under seven to go, first half. again. Iowa's got another one. Matthew. Ennis Inge with a hit. Hughes with a recovery. Coming from the outside, Ennis Inge is going to come from the flat spine side again from Bill Batten never gets there. Gary Taylor is trying to block him that time. That is a mismatch. Taylor does not handle him well. When you're leaving backs on those linebackers, you have to stop them at the line of scrimmage. This time ahead of steam from the outside, the blind side back. The ball's on the turf again, and the Hawkeyes have it on the 18-yard line. Arizona's desert swarm and Iowa's cornfield kids. <laughs> Fourth turnover. And now in the red zone for the Iowa offense again. First down at the 18. Sherman deep drop. Plenty of time this time. Incomplete. That was intended for Knipper, the tight end. The Hawkeyes did not really even have a back on the field that time. They had three tight ends. Berger was on the field, a fullback, but he's not really a running back type player. He was in the block. They did not have Banks or Shaw in the game. Same look. White to the top of your screen. Gibson to the left side. Again, Berger, not a ball carrier, in the backfield. Sherman throws complete. Gibson on the run to the corner. Touchdown! Damon Gibson on a crossing pattern, and the junior out of Houston's got it in the end zone. Do you get the feeling that Hayden Fry, Brad, said same thing the other way and hit the guy this time, Matt? They went to their speed guy at backup wide receiver David Gibson, who can run, and he showed why Hayden Fry told us that this guy will be a player for us. What a turnaround in the last minute of action. From down 7 0 to soon to be up 14 7. For the point after. Up and right down the middle. Damon Gibson is going to come from the left side of the formation. It was the mirror image of the play they threw the play before. This time, Sherman's going to go back. The tight ends pick across the field for him. Gets just a bump on McAllister. That's all they needed. They picked off McAllister. Gibson goes around. Never has a chance. McAllister does to catch him. Remember what led to it. Batten hit by Ennis Inge, who's had a huge defensive game. Matt Hughes fumble recovery, and two plays later, touchdown Iowa. Well, the same problems Arizona had a year ago, protecting the quarterback has become a problem in this game. When they wanted to throw, they had 31 sacks a year ago. The sack has been the problem in this game so far. 
Turnovers. Turn they keep turning it over. And turnovers. They were a minus eight last year. It was really one of the things Dick Tomey wanted to underline. We can't be in a negative situation. Of course, every coach in college football is going to emphasize the yeah. same thing. So it's kickoff time again. Brian Hurley. You really have to feel for that Arizona defense. Iowa really hasn't been able to do much until the turnovers obviously put them into some bad predicaments. Really only left one play out there, and that was that touchdown pass a moment ago. Where the tight end, Flemister, I think, picked McAllister. <laughs> runs up on this at the seventh. Had a nice return last time. He's got another nice one. And he lost the ball. I think Arizona covered this one, however. Looked like Ron Holmes got on top of it on the kick return. All of a sudden, the Wildcats having a wild time trying to hold on to the football. Callister broke out, and I think it might have been Plez Atkins coming across number 23, the corner, who's on the special teams that stripped that ball with his helmet or elbow. Wildcats, as you said, very fortunate to have the ball back. Look at that. <laughs> that's the three you don't want to go in. That's not the trifecta you're no. looking for right there. That's not the type of consistency you're looking for. So first down, after all the excitement. Let's see if they can hold on to it here. The Iowa defense is pumped. Play fake, rolls and throws, completes it, but it's only going to be about a yard gain. For Ron Holmes as Tom Knight ran him out of bounds. Let's check in with Mike Tirico. And he'll be giving us a lot more scores in about six minutes of playing time. 6-14, clock rolling, second quarter. Iowa leads. Arizona 14 to 7. Dick Tomey's club having a hard time finding a handle here in the second quarter. Here's Schmidtke. Almost ran over the umpire and got about nine. A little bit short, it appears, of the first down. Third and short will be coming up. Frank Middleton, the important player on this offensive line, off coming off that injury, does a nice job of finding out which way Hurley Portlip's going to go and taking him the way he wants to go that time. Let's check in with Adrian about Middleton. Adrian? On the running game, Gary's doing a great job. However, on passing, remember that knee injury, that prophylactic or protective brace to his right knee is what saved him. But on that last fumble, when Ennis Inge came in, he was supposed to slide to the left, a missed assignment, which is what caused the fumble. That'd be a little bit hard to slide, huh? Schmidtke, first down. Matt Hughes makes the tackle, but uh, about a three-yard gain by Kevin Schmidtke, the junior, out of Tucson. Nebraska at halftime, shutting out Michigan State. Fans, Kinnick Stadium were, were really into it before the ball game, and they got quiet in a hurry as they saw Iowa sputtering both on offense and on defense before the defense has turned up the heat in the second quarter. First down here, though, for the Wildcats at the 46-yard line. Shotgun for back. Going deep, almost intercepted, and almost offensive interference. Richard Dice and Tom Knight are out there, Dice the intended receiver. Interesting player, Tommy Knight. We visited with him yesterday that time. Yesterday, he's had the good coverage deep on Dice. And Tom Knight says, my first game as a freshman was against Miami at night. Lined up against Kevin Williams the first time. It's been easy since then, but Tommy Knight has gone through a lot of injuries to his yep. knees. And he said he is the first time he has been healthy as you see Batten have to throw that ball with Keith coming right up the middle. It was Ortlund again coming up and putting him into that throw. Yep, Ortlund got him in the ribs. Second down to 10, again from the gun. <laughs> you see that draw play coming from up here. Schmidtke, it's easy to see everything from up here. <laughs> Apparently, it's being snuffed out pretty quickly down there by the Iowa defense also. Lafleur made the tackle on Schmidtke. One of the goals for this Arizona team was to run the ball better this year. So far, they only have 40 yards rushing in this game. Dick Tomey was a little bit concerned about not having that breakaway back. It is very apparent that they do not. They were that guy. last in the Pac-10 last year in rushing. Only 103.6 yards a game. Third down and eight. Batten directing traffic. Iowa shows some blitz. They bring some blitz. Batten has to run out of the pocket. He put a nice move on, and he got a first down. 
Well, Eric Thickpin will never hear the end of that. The safety man who came up to try to make the play for Iowa, and the quarterback got around it. Iowa had a lot of their backups in that time in that nickel situation. Thickpin was in. Jason House was on the outside, taking in his injury, giving him a blow. And Batten does a nice job of seeing the hole up there. Iowa in a lot of deep man-to-man -man coverage that time because of the blitz. And Batten had a lot of room to make it really tough on Thickpin to make that tackle. You, you ran the wishbone at Purdue. That was one of your kind of moves not, right not there. Not even that fast. <laughs> First down. For Arizona trailing by a touchdown, four minutes, seven seconds remaining in the half. At the Iowa 36. Patton play action. Slips in the backfield. Again, trying to buy some time. You better buy a lot. There's nobody to throw to. Took a big shot. Dennis <laughs> Inge and Rollins combined after he got maybe four on that scramble. I think Homer Smith expected a blitz that time. Iowa did not do it. They kept both backs in, and there was no one to throw the ball to. Batten's biggest problem today has probably been slipping on the field. Yeah, and he I know really Adrian, has. Adrian was talking and hearing on the sideline from uh, some of the Arizona players about the field surface. It is a little bit longer than they're used to, the grass. Miles and Taylor flanking back out of a shotgun set, second down at six. Quarterback draw. Broke out of a tackle, got inside the 30. Play by design. Batten's having some trouble. I don't know if the other players are, Adrian. Well, you got to remember, Brad, that the length of the grass here in Kinnick Stadium is about an inch and a half longer than it is back at their home stadium in Arizona. They actually get their grass from the fairways and putting greens of a local golf course. <laughs> so what they're used to putting and driving on, they got to run on here today. When Adrian and Gary and I walked on the field yesterday to say hi to Coach Tomey, he says, hey, you guys got a long one? <laughs> If uh, Arizona gets their grass from the putty green in the fairways, Iowa gets theirs from the rough. This is where I play, this kind of stuff. <laughs> you see a slip. Third down at three. Ninth play of the drive. And we have somebody move. Deconic. Delay a game on the offense. Five yards. Ran out. out. And we got a time to check in with Mike Tirico. Okay, Brad, just a reminder, coming up on the Office Max Halftime Report, we will talk about the other Big Ten teams in action, not just going on now, but games coming up a little bit later on. The debut for Scott Frost as Nebraska quarterback. How's he doing? We'll analyze that, as well as look ahead to North Carolina-Syracuse tonight, all coming up when Kirk and Lee join me at half. All right, Mike, I think Jack Frost could play quarterback for Nebraska. That's my opinion. Third down, a long eight. trouble and his wide receiver no, I, I think the whistle blew I think the whistle blew was delay a game again they ran down twice they did, did not get off before the 25 second clock delay a game on the offense five yards not good no third down oh well, that's a bad one yeah. that's when if you're in the NFL and you're playing at home you just put your hands right over your ears <laughs> you don't want to hear you're going to hear the booze on that one right there Four penalties on Arizona, all on their offense. This drive has taken them over four and a half minutes, started at their own 34 yeah. yard line. Brad, that's taken a very manageable third and three into the third yeah. and 13. That's right. Exactly what it is. Backed up almost to the 40 yard line. And they'll see a deep zone. Patton got some pressure, threw out to his safety valve, and dropped it. Gary Taylor was waiting out there at the 40, and it hit him right about the four, and he didn't hold on. And, but if he had, he wouldn't have gone another yard. Uh, that, that was good defense this time. Just enough pressure from that Hawkeye defensive line in the third and 13, knowing that they can't throw the ball. With John LaFleur this time, he's been suffering with a little bit of a bad back problem. He's in there, giving Ortlieb a little bit of a blow. Putting the pressure, and you see the depth of this Iowa Hawkeye team, I think, Brad, starting to take effect in this football game. They are a very deep team. They might not have the superstars outside of Shaw, but they have very deep players that can come in and perform. Peyton will have to punt now. Here's a third and three into a punting situation. Yeah, hit this one too hard. Way too hard. About 12 yards too hard. 
And Iowa will have it with the minute 28 to go in the first half on offense. Coming up tomorrow, some of the faithful at Kinnick Stadium. I think I heard uh, 60, right around 68,000 announced. Not quite capacity, a couple thousand under. And Hayden Fry said to us yesterday, I heard people complaining that there were only going to be 68,000 for this game. That's well, not bad. They might not, have, they might not have sold out, but they must have let some people in here for free because I don't see any seats. I don't either. <laughs> From the 20, Sherman to Shaw. And a nice open field tackle. Mikhail Smith stays with him, and that's not easy to do with number five. Only a minute and 18 seconds left in this first half. I think even though they're going to be in a mode of trying to throw the ball and pick something up, I'm sure Hayden Fry and Don Patterson, the offensive coordinator, has said, be careful. We're leading. Let's get it yeah. with halftime. And if we have to punt the ball, let's get out of here without any big turnovers. There's Don in the middle with a mustache. I would think, let's take our good fortune and head to the locker room. They look to want more, and they're going to go deep sideline. Incomplete intended for Flemis near the tight end. Don Patterson, who's been coaching the quarterbacks the last few years, along with Hayden Fry, has said that Matt Sherman is a tremendously accurate quarterback throwing the football. He just has not seemed to be in sync today exactly as we can remember him. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we're the bad luck. <laughs> that could be. The first time I saw him yesterday, he said, I'm not throwing five interceptions like you did last year when He's I was here. Six of 11 so far today. But he, remember, he also had that drop from Timmy Dwight on a well thrown ball, too. So I guess it isn't as bad as it appears. Of course, a long line of pretty good quarterbacks here, led by Chuck Long, maybe the most famous, Chuck Hartley, and then Matt Rogers, those guys. Dwight in motion on a third down. Toss. Shaw. Waits for his blockers. Not enough blockers. Burnett got him low and he's been bottled up today. Secretary he really has. We've seen him have games where he's 200 yards. He's just uh, not getting that much. 37 yards on nine attempts so far. I think it's going to be short and a fourth down and I would not be surprised now if Arizona they have a timeout. This is where that one long pass that stopped the clock. No, Ar Arizona Arizona's does not have any timeouts left in the game and so they're not going to be able to stop the top. And the huddle clock is actually three seconds later. You're right from the game clock. So they can let this thing run out. But what a second quarter for Iowa. Their defense came to life, forced the Wildcats into some untimely fumbles, and have taken the lead over Dick Tomey's Wildcats. Arizona led 7-0 at the end of the first quarter. At halftime, though, the hometown Hawkeyes lead 14-7. Now with the Office Max halftime report. Here again, Mike Tirico. Mike. Comes down to Ron Holmes at the 9. And out to about the 29, maybe the 30. Let's check in with Adrian Karst. Brad, inside the visitor's locker room where Dick Tony really got after the Wildcats about a lack of discipline. Last week against UTIP, only one penalty late in the game. Today in the first half, already four. Two delayed penalties back-to-back. -back. Silly stuff. Other than that, the mood was pretty well relaxed. <laughs> you know why? Look, look at the pink walls. After Hayden Fry studied behavioral psychology, he found out that the color pink is supposed to relax the mind and remove any tenacity that you might have. I remember being in this locker room twice as a player after getting throttled <laughs> and thinking some very deep thoughts. Oh, and here's a deep thought. Tom Knight on an interception on the first play from scrimmage. The turnover bugaboo strikes the Wildcats again. And Iowa's got it back at the Arizona 34-yard line. Chief Smith, the freshman that time, waited just a too long to throw the ball to Richard Dice. Tom Knight, a veteran football player who's seen it all, had time to run under this one. The ball was thrown a bit too far. Smith, and Smith anticipated that thing being open. Pick off another turnover. Smith a little too relaxed coming out yeah, of that pink locker maybe. room. But I think Tom Knight did a nice job that time of anticipating the play, taking a pattern read, running in front of it, and making the play. Adrian said we'd see more, more of Smith. That might be all we see of him for a while. Yeah, there's not many guys left. <laughs> That's right. Matt and Smith. Inside the 34-yard line. And Iowa has to take a timeout. They were running out of time. We have just 13 seconds elapsed in this quarter. 14-7 Hawkeyes on a kickoff and recovered it themselves. So Iowa try to take advantage. Just outside the Arizona 33. First down. Nice play fake. Now in trouble is Sherman, but two Wildcats take each other out of the play. 
And the pass completion, first catch for a tight end today. And it's all the way to the 14 for Chris Knipper. And Sherman did a nice job that time of getting out of trouble because he was trying to get the ball to Demo Odoms that time on the play-action pass. A late flag on the play. I think there might have been clipping or holding downfield on the play. Holding call against Iowa. Yeah, pushing the back. My guess would be Timmy Dwight. <laughs> <laughs> I think you saw it then. No, I did not. I did. I just got to know he's involved. What Demo Odom's come in the screen from the right side. He's wide open. Sherman didn't have time. Gets the ball outside. To Knipper. Now there's blocking downfield. There's Timmy Dwight. <laughs> you call it. <laughs> He got McAllister from behind, so. Yeah, it was just a little shot. Yeah, just a shot. Sherman first completion to a tight end, so basically it's negated by the penalty. Tight ends have been a big part of the Iowa offense of Hayden Fry over the years, and they've had some good ones, the Mar Cooks and well, Jonathan Hayes and Slutsker now with the Colts. The, the play is going to stand, though, Brad, because it's tacked on to the end of that play. That's so true. It will probably be just inches for first down here, second down and inches. I think. It's from the end of the play, which was down inside the 15, so they bring it out to the 23, and it's first down and less than one. Not a bad situation. No. Here. Except they're running out of time right now to get the playoff. Shaw got the first and down to the 20 yard line. Kelly Malvo from the corner made the hit. Cedric Shaw had, what, 47 yards first half, so he's right around 50 for the game. He is, and you remember last year when he carried the ball 42 times against Michigan State. Peyton Fry and Don Patterson said that will not happen this year. We want to be more, more balanced. We've got Tavian Banks that can also carry the ball. We would not expect that Shaw will carry the amount of carries that he had last year when he was the go-to guy when Banks was hurt. First down at the 20. Shaw, big opening off the right side. And now shows his dance moves. Might have danced his way very close to another first down. Dance moves with a little bump and grind at the end right there because Shaw, as this game has gone on, seems to have been, been able to get more comfortable with the blocking schemes against this uh, defense. is a little bit different for the Hawkeyes. Hayden Fry has said it, it is a huge advantage, Brad, to be able to play this defense first. If he met him in the middle of the season, it'd be a lot di more difficult for him. Second and short. Less than a yard, Shaw dips his way outside, first and goal. Just outside the Arizona six now. Malvo, Sprott, Smith there to meet him. But Shaw has it first and goal. And Arizona against 1,000-yard rushers in past seasons. They've been pretty stingy. C.J. Williams had a big game. Uh, Georgia Tech running back. Holcomb and uh, Jabbar Washington not much and Dick Tomey said yesterday talking about Cedric Choice he's a lot better than Freeman Bill Jabbar well Jabbar had 115 yards for the Dolphins last week so that's saying something about Cedric <laughs> here he comes again cuts outside puts his head down shows his power this time and he powers to the one I think the temperature and the amount of turnovers for this Arizona defense has started to have its toll as Arizona has had their guys out there a little bit longer. They're a little bit more undersized. They're made to run a little bit farther and that big Hawkeye offensive line is starting to grind them down. Spiler comes in as an extra fullback, full house backfield. Shaw, airborne, cartwheel, touchdown. Cedric Shaw's 25th career touchdown. You better be careful taking off that helmet and everything like that. They still have the rules in effect of not being able to do too much emotions on the field. You see, his feet crossed the goal line first on this play. As you said, the cross cartwheel, and the ball goes across last. First score of the year has put Iowa up 20 to 7. 
Zach Bromert in for the point after low snap handled well by Driscoll extra point is up and good. Cedric Shaw running Iowa's top ground gamer ground gainer career wise and here he's got himself another six. Work and along with those guys up front being able to do a lot of work. That's right. Trying to cool off on the sidelines. Gary said hot day here in the Midwest. Sunnier now than it probably was in the first half. The other thing that the Arizona coaches and players didn't want to talk about at all, obviously, is the time difference uh, that they're coming through. This is this basically this game in their mind started at 9:30 in the morning on their time clocks in the body, which means it's right about noon. They're getting yeah. hungry. <laughs> they're getting hungry. Maybe they're going to get warmed up. They better now because they're down two touchdowns. They were up seven nothing. Iowa scored 21 straight, and their defense has set them up to get those 21 points. Hurley's kick. McAllister from the three. Trying to bounce outside. He lost yardage. Bounced down at the 14 yard line. So Arizona has to start in a bit of a hole. Check in with Mike Tirico. Mike, touchdown Tony. About every third time he catches a ball, it's a touchdown. Yeah, but I would say for Eastern Michigan, who lost the Temple, that's a little that's bit of a moral, moral victory going there, holding Wisconsin to just seven points. Inside handoff, Gary Taylor. Not much, maybe a yard for Taylor. It'll be second down and nine. More college football coming your way on ESPN Thursday night. We'll get it started with a weekend kickoff show at 7.30 Eastern. Then it's off to Jersey. Magic Benton and number 11, Miami. Looking for a win against Rutgers. 8 o'clock, the kickoff. You just never know what might happen on a Thursday night college game. Boy, you find that out here yeah. two days ago, huh? Vandy and Notre Dame. And Notre Dame had to hang on for dear life. They win that 14 to 7. The home underdog always is charged up to play that game. You bet. Oh, he's got him. Smith huh. scrambling around now, cuts back to the other side, and Rollins will knock him out of bounds at the 22-yard line. You can see the scrambling ability of why Smith is an option-type quarterback. Has a strong arm also, but he ran away from a sack that time. Frank Middleton's down again. Remember that knee injury in the first half. Looks like he might have got to him a little bit late that time also. Play action pass again. Not any protection from the outside. Jared DeVries, number 94, had a shot at him. Smith outruns him. Goes to the sideline. Oh, I don't. Did he get even a hand on that? Oh, I got a face yeah, he mask. Did. Yep. He did. Fingers Just in like there. Me. That was a one finger five yard. <laughs> Instead of a five finger five yard, finger discount. It's a no, one, no, no, one finger. finger five yard. We don't know which finger. We're not going to go there. <laughs> at the 27 yard line, first time. Mickey stays in. The tailback. Wide open, the tight end Lucky who has their touchdown and now he's got a big gain out near midfield. Tom Knight put a hat on him, but Lucky who's a load, almost 270, goes 21 yards. Mike Luckley started out as a 225 pound player for Arizona. Now he's 270 pounds, comes rumbling across. Perfect throw this time from Smith on a nice little bootleg type pass and Iowa closes on it, but that is a positive play that I'm sure Homer Smith and Dick Tony would have loved to have had in the first half when they were in control of this game. Now they're going to have to fight to get the momentum back in their direction. Great numbers for the tight end. First down at the 48. Smith, plenty of time to throw the out and does to Dice. Richard Dice, first catch of the day for the guy they call the Dice Man. And he's quite a player. Big physical wide receiver, 6'2", almost 220. A couple years ago he had a tremendous campaign as he was their leading receiver before injuries had 56 catches in 94 but last year he missed five games with a bad knee he played on that knee for a while gave it a try and then just couldn't go and uh, he probably as most guys are when they come back from those knees aren't quite the same but he's got what they call acrobatic ability to catch the ball does he ever second a yard Smith rolls and throws that way again. Nice catch by Dice in front of him. 
Puts the hands out, makes the turn, and has 13 more on a first down. And all of a sudden, the Arizona offense starts to click. Smith looks so comfortable throwing the ball on the run. And with the type of protection that he's getting, he might want to get used to it because that's <laughs> probably the best way that he can do it. Well, he was a fifth-round draft choice of the Detroit Tigers in 94. Spent one year in the minors See, that, at shortstop. That so he I likes to move yeah, and that's throw. A, I don't understand that. A, a fifth-round draft choice shortstop at for the Tigers, he must not be able to play a leg. Oh boy, now you can't go home, sir. <laughs> He's four for four right now. Draw play, looked like a good call after the pass plays work, but Iowa knew it was coming. He ran through Hughes and then Jared DeVries cleaned it up that time. Did he ever. DeVries was the MVP defensively the Sun Bowl last year as a true freshman. He'll hit you. Yeah, had 12 sacks last year, and he says he wants to be changed from a big play type player as a dominant football player this year. That's his goal, is to be in there every play making things happen. It's a pretty cool goal, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Not worried about the sacks. I just want to dominate everybody. Seventh play of the Wildcat drive, and penalty markers. Delay a game? Uh, I think nope. maybe too many players All on the right. field. 12 men on the field. Looks like the extra extra man might have been well, Scooter Spr Sprott. Scooter Sprott left, so uh, let's blame it. Substitution again. infraction. 12 men in the offense. Still second down. Once they had 12 men in the huddle and broke the huddle. Oh, there we go. The referee is going to call that play. Let's check in with Adrian. Something to keep in mind here, guys. Homer Smith has a very innovative offense, but a very simple one. There's a lot of communication problems between the line, the quarterback, what play is in, what play isn't in, how many men are in, lack of discipline. That's what Tony's angry about. And all five penalties on the offense. From the shotgun. Smith tucks it, turns it up. Goes down at the 32-yard line. Got about five. Matt Hughes made the tackle. Check in with Mike Jericho. And that was Hornstein that threw that one. Not Schultz. Third down and a dozen for Arizona. This is a big play with eight minutes left third quarter. They've got to sustain this drive. Ennis in. Got to come from the outside. Pressure comes from the inside, though, and the throw on the run behind the intended receiver. Rodney Williams incomplete. Now what do you do on... Uh, Fourth down, if you're going to put it. If they have enough leg to kick a field goal, that might be an opportunity to also try a field goal attempt. Here. Peyton does both, and that is what they're going to try. They're going to try a 50-yard field goal, and he's capable of this. There's really no win. If there's anything, it's helping him just a bit. His first field goal attempt was last week. As an Arizona Wildcat, he hit from 52. This 50-yarder. Plenty it's of perfect. <laughs> you bet. Can't beat that. 50 yard field goal. So Arizona gets something out of the possession as Matt Payton, a long range field goal. That's his second of 50 plus on the season. And with seven minutes and 49 seconds remaining in the third quarter, it's Iowa 21, Arizona 10. Back at Kelly Stadium, Iowa leads Arizona 21 10. As Arizona got something out of their 53-yard drive. Took them nine plays in a little over four minutes. But they did get the field goal. And now their defense has at least had a bit of a rest on the sideline. 21 points for Iowa, yet only 124 total yards on offense. Yeah. Arizona, although they have seemed to struggle with their protection, it really outgained the Iowa offense 200 yards to 124. Tim Dwight back deep. And we'll take a beat on this one at the two-yard line. Dwight out to the 25. That's where the Iowa offense will go to work. Brad Nessler and Gary Danielson along with you at Kinnick Stadium. We talked about the balance of Iowa, Gary, that uh, Hayden Fry has this year. I think it shows their defense is playing as well as their offense right now. You know, if you had to pick, like, who's going to carry this football team, their defense and the offense, I don't even think Hayden Fry really knows. He knows he's got a lot of specialists. He said, I don't have that great breakaway player like a Chuck Vaughn who could carry the football team, but a lot of good football players. The offensive line, I don't think, is as dominant as I've seen here at Iowa in the past. And as he enters the Big Ten season, that's something I think that will grow here because of their great tradition of offensive linemen as they get there. This is a pretty tough football game. Usually they're playing more than Iowa. <laughs> 
thrown as much as they may normally, but part of that's the pressure of Arizona's defense. Tavian Banks got back to the line of scrimmage, maybe eked out a half yard. Ohio State is just throttling Rice and Wisconsin by a couple. As you saw, Tony Simmons touchdown catch a few moments ago. Later on at ABC, Penn State ranked seventh. And the Brain Bowl. I think huh? that's what everybody's I'm interested in seeing is how Northwestern is going to come out this year now in a game that they everybody thinks they should win and win big. Yep. Shoes on the other foot. Lone wide receiver to the top of your screen, Willock. Tight end in motion. The Sherman wants to throw, pumps once, goes out, completes it. They dropped it though after he caught it. Do we have another? They're going to call that incomplete. Oh boy, that's what they're going to say. Field judge that time called that one incomplete way back at the end, back side of the. As you saw him with the gesture yeah. saying that he was bobbling it on the way down. So incomplete. This ball was thrown a slant to the outside, and Tom, Matt, I'm sorry, Matt Sherman clutched on that throw just to begin with a bit, and then the ball was a little bit behind, and that's why it came. You see, get a little hit right as he let that go. down and nine at the 26 yard line just under seven minutes to go third we're like in motion and flags too much time no the officials have been busy here the last couple of minutes legal motion on that offensive line it's gonna make it third down and 14 dead ball illegal snap on the offense five yards still third down they have about 12 different ways of calling illegal motion or, <laughs> illegal or procedure, off whatever. Illegal procedure, offsides, whatever you want to call it. Now. Ten penalties in the ball game now. Five, really, five for each team. You really could be an official probably five years earlier, but to learn all those different calls <laughs> takes you like years of experience. <laughs> Third and 14. Dick Honig just wanted to get on TV for the Honig family. <laughs> Sherman looked like he changed things up at the line, and now he's running for his life. Armand Williams. And there's the whip linebacker who whips Sherman down at the four-yard line. We've talked about Armand Williams lining up all over the football field with his hand down. He's really a linebacker, and he really puts pressure on that defense as to how do you play him? Do you put an offensive lineman on him, or do you put a back on him? This time, Iowa changes it up a bit and puts no one on him. <laughs> That's not the way to do it. <laughs> He just gets caught up in traffic a bit. No one goes to him. Sack. See if they put some heat on galleries in his own end zone. End over end kick. Rodney Williams takes it on the fly at the 41. Williams dances. Found himself an alley. Down to the 21. 20-yard 20 return and great field position for Arizona. A short punt and a great return. And now they're almost in the Iowa red zone again. Trailing 21 to 10. Don't forget, coming up tomorrow night, ESPN Sunday Night Baseball, a rematch of last year's American League Championship Series, the Mariners and the Indians. Young superstar Alex Rodriguez having a breakout year for the Mariners, and you never know what Albert Bell's going to do, no matter where the game or what the time. But John and Joel have it for you, 8 o'clock tomorrow on ESPN. First and 10, Arizona at the Iowa 20-yard line. Smith. Takes off on his own and a lot of green in front of him. Great speed. Touchdown. A running quarterback, when you blitz, is the only guy in the defense that has not accounted for. We're playing man-to-man -man against all five receivers. The quarterback is not accounted for, and that's why coaches love to have quarterbacks that can do things from the pocket. You know, this guy, this guy reminds me of Bo Morgan. Bo Morgan at Air Force, right. He throws well on the run. He's not tall in stature, but he's got good wheels. He's a competitor and looks like a, I guess he's a better quarterback than shortstop. <laughs> Why not? Matt Payton in for the point after. Try to cut the Iowa lead to four. And he does. Five minutes and 56 seconds remaining now. Third quarter. Nice punt return by Williams. Sets up. Keith Smith 
from 20 yards out and he took off like Steve Young on this one once he saw the daylight. Saw in the corner of the end zone Ron Holmes also doing a really good job of blocking his corner. I think it was Plez Atkins. It was Plez Atkins keeping him in the end zone and that created the space as Smith got there and beat Damian Robinson to the corner. Wow. 21-17, so this game continues to seesaw. It was 7-0 at the end of the first quarter, Arizona. Iowa scored 21 straight, all off Arizona turnovers. And now the Wildcats have responded with a couple of scores of their own. First the field goal, now the touchdown run by Smith. It's 21-17. Yeah, you know, Iowa had that lead, but I don't, I mean, I never had a good feeling about Iowa really, really dominating the football game. You know, they had no offense at all in this game, and they were really dependent on Arizona turning the ball over to them. The running game has been non-existent for Iowa. Compared to what we're used to, Iowa. Banks, Fabian Banks from the one. Banks. Across the 20 out to the 22 yard line with 552 remaining third quarter. Let's check in with our partner Mike Tirico. Mike, Mike, you had those two guys, the uh, Ward Dunn and Tiki Barber in Virginia, and you can go down the list in the uh, ACC and the Big Ten. Both have tremendous running backs. Matt Sherman brings up his backfield and the offense of the Hawkeyes at the 23 yard line. Straight drop, Sherman. Throws to Shaw to the backfield. And Cedric got out to the 30. We'll give him seven. Chester Burnett, the linebacker, and maybe now a cramp is looks to be the problem, we hope, for Cedric Shaw. Coming up later on, we'll be selecting our Kelly Springfield players of the game. And this guy is a player that Iowa doesn't want to lose, even though they have a great one in Tavian Banks behind him. But the way he grabbed that foot, you would just sort of think maybe it's heat cramps out here on kind of a warm yeah, early pushing, September day. Pushing it back at med, my third year of med school, I saw that that's definitely a cramp. <laughs> third year of med school. Wait, last week I didn't even know what <laughs> knee it was when he got That's right. Coming right off the end of that pass right now, stretching out a bit, gets a turn, and in the heat, as you mentioned, no matter if you're carrying the ball 40 times or 10 times, you start to pay a price. Chris Knipper, the tight end that I'm standing up, can see the corner blitz from Chris McAllister. That's one of the advantages of standing up and looking at the secondary that Hayden Fry says he likes to do with his tight end. Check in with Adrian. Idea, guys, this is an idea that Hayden brought from North Texas in 1978. And aside from that advantage, if you take a look when Knipper and the other uh, tight ends line up, their feet match the hands of the offensive tackle. And what that has forced the Arizona defensive ends to do is to move another half yard off the ball. That's why they've been successful running off that right and left tackle, guys. How about a drawback for that, Gary? Anything there? I would think that you'd have a tougher time blocking a quick guy running across your face. If a linebacker, if you get Derek Thomas lined up against you in the National Football League, that's why those guys don't stand up because that guy can be so quick on the inside stunt, you might not get to him. How about your tight end can see the blitz, but can your quarterback well, see around your big butt? That's a problem. <laughs> if you're trying to look out way wide, can you see the corner that time? Second down three. Toss to Banks. Oh. Nice open field hit. I'm telling you, Tune, Van Tune makes that tackle. This Arizona defense, they may not have the Teddy Bruskies and Chuck Osburns and the Brandon Sanders in their second, but they can still flat run. Kelly Melvo, too, you know, 180 pound uh, cornerback that time, took that play on and really, with the proper technique of knowing where his help is, turned it back in and he just took on the blocker and made Banks cut it up inside. That's great team defense. Line for the Hawkeyes. Third down. Iowa doesn't pick this up. Arizona's definitely going to have the momentum. But they do. Tim Dwight with a catch in the first down after the 38-yard line. They are, Smith was there with him, but they, pick up a set up. They have not been able to unleash Tim Dwight, one of their most important weapons on this football team. And so you got to give the credit to that Arizona defense. Dwight, a running back just two years ago, moved to wide receiver in 95. He led him in receiving, but he told us yesterday, I've just learned how to be a wide receiver this year. Yeah. I finally understand how to run my routes and set up my guys. It's a whole new ball game. Aiden Fry will say he's the finest competitor pound for pound and heartbeat for heartbeat that I've ever had in 35 years. He just wants to get after it every play. We saw that on punt coverage earlier today, too. Tuna makes another stop on Banks at the 41-yard line. 
Iowa again went unbalanced line to the wide side of the field, and that's something Larry McDuff, defensive coordinator for Arizona, said he had to match up. Would be aware when Iowa shifts their line and keep the numbers in their advantage. They did a good job of recognizing again, Hayden Fry has not been able to catch this Arizona defense off balance yet. White to the right. Demo Odoms, the other wide out to the bottom of your screen on a second and seven. Fabian Banks stays in there. Here comes a blitz. Sherman somehow found his footing. And Sherman knocked by Armand Williams from behind. Lost the ball, but also got a first down. Sherman showed that he's not going to be playing any wide receiver anytime soon. <laughs> Doesn't quite have the speed of Damon Gibson, does he? Goes back out, number 37. Armand Williams comes around in that stunt. Sherman almost falls, but now the whole time from behind, you'll see the difference in college football, even the pros. You're looking for the turnover the whole way. Comes from behind, he's not thinking tackle. He's almost like a basketball player, Brad, coming behind uh -huh. on, a, on a fast break. I'm looking for that steal, pick off that dribble from behind, and Williams closed pretty quickly there, didn't he? He knocked it out of bounds. It comes back where, there he goes, he's still <laughs> swinging. It goes back to where the hit was made, not where the ball went out of bounds. And that is right at midfield. That's a new rule this year, by the way, in college football. Here's a give to Shaw. Big opening, Cedric Shaw! And that's what we're used to seeing from number five, and now tack on the penalty on the end of a 25-yard run, and you've got about a 40-yard gain. Kelly Malvo is the guy who came late to hit Shaw as he came and busted it out. That's one thing Don Patterson told us yesterday, the offensive coordinator. He expected a lot of bad plays against this Arizona defense, but he expected some big plays. This is the first time they got a big play this time, got into the secondary this time. Jones has not been able to make the play. Boy, I don't understand that. He was pushed by from behind you know, that time. That's a it, bad call. In defensive Malvo, he didn't know Shaw had been already out of bounds well, about got, two yards before He got that. shoved. They're going to pick that up. No flag. That's good a good, good that job. That is a good call. Yep. And that's officials playing good team work together as seeing things that the one guy couldn't see. They get help from another official and move it back. Excellent job. Still a 25-yard gain, has Iowa at the 25, and it has Cedric Shaw, 85 for the day. Every time he picks up a yard, it's just to himself embedding him, embedding his name further in the Iowa record books because he came in as their career leader in rushing, and now he's over 3,100 yards for his career. Shaw again. Not much this time. Back to the line of scrimmage. That's about it. Tafua cleaned up after two and a forced to play in the backfield. Brad, let's go back to that play one more time. How the officials cleaned it up. Rashad Carter right here is going to shove Malavo in the back, and that's who hits the player right there. See that shove? That's what called the flag to come out. It was covered up by another official who had a better, clearer picture of it, and they picked up the flag. Second down and a long nine. Just over three minutes left, third quarter. 21-17, Iowa leading at home. But Arizona had some momentum prior to that run by Shaw. Look out, Matt Sherman. Ball loose. Going to be scooped up. Tafua. The defensive tackle has it all the way to the 41-yard line. Salabaya with a hit. Tafua with a fumble recovery. And Arizona has that momentum I talked about back. And now Tafua apparently has hurt his knee on that fumble return. Uh, he's out of breath. I'm going to just guarantee you that a 10-yard sprint, I, I guess you could qualify it as a sprint, was all Tafua had. If they wouldn't have tackled him there, he might have called time. <laughs> <laughs> You're bad. First Sherman was slow as a running back. Now you're picking on a guy that weighs 285 pounds. <laughs> a sack. He had Damon Gibson wide open. The same play. Van Tune comes around. Salamua causes it. Now Tafu picks it up. Now watch this. Where can I call timeout? Right now yep. he's going, I'm out of gas. Shaw ran him down from behind. And he is trying to get some wind over there. And meanwhile, shaking up on Iowa's end was Mike Goff, their offensive guard. Coming off slowly. So here's Arizona, having scored the last 10 points with an opportunity at the Iowa 40-yard line. Smitke 
Found himself a little bit of an opening. Got about four. Vernon Rollins put the stop on him, along with Aaron Klein. Get the feeling that Arizona has probed and switched all game and deciding how to attack this Iowa defense. And they decided that Smith, by moving him in and out of the pocket, is the best way to do it. A ton of turnovers in this game, most of which had led to the opposition points. 21-17, all of Iowa's points off turnovers. See if they can get him out of the pocket again. Bootleg sprints. Here's a bootleg. Bootleg and the throw. Complete to Sprott. And Scooter Sprott's got it to the 26 yard line and a first down for the Wildcats. Threw a bit of a knuckler this time, but Sprott just easy catch. They're catching this uh, defense a little bit off balance with the bootleg, with the sprint outs, and Smith, who a lot of people for Arizona thought might make a run at this job, may have turned it around with his ability to get this team out of trouble because their offensive line, even though their experience has not been able to hold up with just regular drop back passing. Brady Batten didn't play that poorly, but you can tell the difference, the dimension that Smith has added. First like, down. Like another blitz situation. Rolls to his left this time, throws the out, complete pickup of eight. Got it out to Richard Dice. And Dice put down by Plez Atkins. But not before he picks up eight. You mentioned the size of Dice, and I think that's what he does better than anything on this, in this play, is to take advantage of Plez Atkins' man-to-man -man coverage. He goes right into him, gets a little of a push-off. It's initiated by him. The ball is thrown to the proper side, away from the coverage, and all Atkins can do is drag Dice down. The Dice man missed five games with that knee injury last year and was still honorable mention all Pac-10. That's how much he's respected around their conference anyway. Second down, long yard from the gun. Straight run by the quarterback, but Iowa was ready for it this time. And Jason House and Ortlieb. Come in to make the stop. It's just another way of running the draw play from shotgun. Instead of handing it to your fullback, you still lead with your halfback, but the quarterback follows the halfback to the, away from the strength of the formation. It's almost old wig T stuff there, though. Hey, he's coached it all, hasn't <laughs> yeah, I think so. I asked Homer Smith yesterday, how much has changed in 35 years? He goes, nothing. <laughs> <laughs> still got a coach, still got to hit somebody. Third I'm down and two. On balance line for Arizona this time to the wide side of the field. That's the side they wanted to go, and Gary Taylor goes down. LaFleur was all over that. And a third quarter has come to a close. When we come back, we'll find out if Arizona wants to go on fourth down or kick a field goal to make it a one-point game. Going to have to wait on that decision. End of three, 21-17, Hawkeyes. from Tucson, but starting the fourth quarter, the Wildcats threatening again. Field goal attempt upcoming, and it's been a story of turnovers and the points off thereof. Check that out. Yeah, you can almost have that read giveaways rather than takeaways. <laughs> and three more riding on the last turnover if Peyton hits the 39-yard field goal. Already hit from 50. hear the hush of the crowd that pretty much tells you that one went right through so when once it was 21 to 7 13 straight points by the Wildcats it's 21 to 20 and obviously that was the strategy in this situation to take this game inside of a field goal game put the pressure back on Iowa force them to drop back in that pocket uh, throw the ball where you've been able to put some pressure on Sherman in this game. Aiden Fry's team now is going to have to respond. Aiden in his 18th year at Iowa and Iowa as a state we congratulate him on its 150th year. So where he spent most of the day yesterday after lunch. <laughs> hey it was free. Downtown Iowa City. Hawkeyes takes precedence over, uh, precedence over the Stars and Stripes here. Yeah, well, <laughs> it's supposed to be the other way around. I know. That's 
<laughs> a little different, right? 21 to 20. Arizona set to kick off. We're just one play into the fourth quarter. Brad Nessler, Gary Danielson, Adrian Karsten with you from Kinnick Stadium on the Iowa campus. Fabian Banks has to watch this one go. And Iowa will have to work from its own 20-yard line. You know, I think both teams feel pretty fortunate where they're standing right now. Iowa, if you'd have told them that you're going to enter the fourth quarter with less than 100 yards rushing or 100 yards passing and have the lead with 21 points, they'd say, wow. Yeah. And if Arizona knew that they turned the ball over five points, it was all five times and only was one point down, they'd say, how? <laughs> In the next 14 minutes, 57 seconds, it might be whoever doesn't turn it over again might win the game. The Iowa offense has been kept pretty much in check today by the modern Arizona Wildcat defense. Odom's in motion. Draw play, Tavian Banks. And that's just what it's been today. Banks had to run. 10 yards to pick up two to try to get around guys in white jerseys. McAllister and Burnett, the last two, he couldn't get around. One play where they were able to gash that defense and get Shaw into the secondary is the only time that a play has been looked like it's been cleanly blocked all day. Mm -hmm. And that's the one that got 25 for Shaw on the run. Although last week, Brad, when we watched Purdue, I felt they were missing a lot of assignments. I don't feel that the case today. I think I was getting there to block the guys. They just haven't been able to do it. There's a lot of speed on that Arizona side of the ball. Only 140 total yards. Maybe 139 after that play for Iowa today. Two and A and Greer. Yeah, Greer just beat his guy from the backside that time. Ran down the line of scrimmage, stayed real flat near the line of scrimmage, and waited for the ball carrier to be there and cleaned up. Two and A forced it back. Greer made the tackle. Back in '93, when Arizona won 10 games, they only allowed 30 yards a game rushing. That was number one in the country. They were number two in '94 at 65 a game last year, but he gasped and they gave up 127 yards a game on the ground, and that was still one of the better marks in the country. Sherman wanted to throw a screen, I think. Now throws it away. For the defense of being able to assignment-wise cover the people you're supposed to cover have not allowed the scratch where it itches offense to get off the mark today. No fingernails right now to scratch with. Your bet. Coming out, coverage all over the field. Ron Williams at times covering the tight end, runs with them, and makes everything a tough throw. He wasn't supposed to throw the ball. That was a setup screen that time, so they were going to go screen all the way. Gallery got a nice punt this time. Williams going to have to call for the fair catch and does at the 42-yard line. Still nice field position for Arizona. They've scored the last 13 points. They're only down one with 13.27 to go. ESPN's presentation of college football is brought to you by the all-new Eclipse Spider Convertible. It's fun you can depend on from Mitsubishi. Tell you what, there hasn't been a lot to cheer about for the Iowa folks here in the last 20 minutes or so. It's been all Arizona. 21 to 20, though. Iowa trying to cling to the lead here with 13.27 to go. The fifth time Iowa's had a three and out and were forced to punt it. So here's the Arizona offense again with Keith Smith looking pretty good at the helm. Screen pass. Sprock taken down from behind. Dragged down by Jason House, who came back over from the far side to make the play. I've seen more offense in this one game of Arizona today than I saw in both games last the last mm -hmm. couple years we've been doing. We did them against Illinois and seen them against Ohio State before. They just seem to be able to have more attacking weapons. I don't know if they have the greatest of players, but they seem to be using all the players the best they can to get the ball moved around and put pressure on the defense in every way possible. Iowa has to cover all 53 yards wide of the field. Second down at six from the 46. Shotgun, Smith all day to throw this one and threw it behind his open tight end, Mike Lucky. Yeah, you see Smith is not as comfortable throwing the ball from the pocket as he is on the run. He probably can't see as well because of his size and he just doesn't have a great feel. Of course, he also was the backup quarterback. He probably hasn't practiced with yep. the first team as much either. Last three possessions, all points.
I, I think this is a huge play for the Iowa defense, and I think the fans understand that. This is the loudest they've been in the game. Third down at six. Smith scrambles. If he gets out of containment, he'll get a first down, but he didn't quite get there. Oh, he just got across the 50, but he's close to a yard and a half to two yards short of the first down. Jared DeVries came around, forced him out of the pocket with Klein, and really got a stop where I thought, as you said, Brad, if he would be able to kick through that last hand tackle, he might have had a lot of room. Again, Iowa in man-to-man -man coverage. You see DeVries come across. He's the guy that knocked him down. Big, big stop for that Hawkeye defense that has to be tired. Peyton now will have to punt. Tim Dwight has been bottled up as far as punt returns today. Dwight from the eight. That by one man. And dances his way for about six or seven on the return. Nifty little return by Dwight. With 11.42 left, Iowa trying to hold on to a one-point lead. 21 to 20, Iowa leads, 11.42 left, and they've got the ball back after Jared DeVries maybe made the defensive play of the game on the scramble by Keith Smith just to trip him up, force the punt. And now Iowa's going to have to show some offense. <laughs> Which they have not showed so far in the second half. Nope. That has got their defense in trouble. They have really done, done nothing on offense in the second half of this game. Only seven completions throwing the ball today for Matt Sherman. He's been pressured all day by the swarming Wildcat defense. Toss it to Cedric Shaw. Wow. Nice pursuit to the ball again. 2 and A is over there. And so is Daniel Greer. Two and A's had a career here in the last quarter and a half. He's really played well. Didn't play at all last week due to disciplinary reasons. Didn't start. And the second half, the senior out of Westminster, California, has been all over the place. That's not much, is it? No, that ain't going to do it. That's Gets a little over three a play. Against the way I do a, an offense that Hayden Fry said, it, you know, has as much depth and weapons as he's ever had. And also said he was maybe playing against the most complex defense they'd have to look at all year. They found that out at Sherman's in trouble again, and down he goes. McAllister and Greer. And Matt Sherman's going, what? Hit me again. The problem on this play for Sherman is again only two Hawkeye receivers go out for a pass. They're looking for the blitz. The tight end gets stoned on one side, trying to stay in the block. The back doesn't get out to the other side. Sherman has no one to throw to. The corner blitz to the outside forces Sherman to eat the football. Trying to go for the home run on the call cost him a big sack. You can see the athletic talent of McAllister there. He ran right into Berger, bounced around. Picked up the sixth sack of the day by the Arizona defense. Third down, 19. Shaw, as Iowa plays it safe, they'll play field position football and just a couple of boo birds out. Yeah, the problem with playing field position football is you're punting from your own 15-yard line. Mm -hmm. The punt itself will probably come from inside the five as Gallery trots out there. Rodney Williams has had one punt return today of 20 yards that set them up for Smith's touchdown run, remember. And he'll wait number 46 kick here. Spiral, but a line drive that Williams can feel at the 31. Got around one man. And Williams out to the 43-yard line. 12-yard return on a 54-yard kick as we check in with Mike Tirico. Uh -oh. had a bad ankle. Uh oh, you mean that that means Nebraska's getting better? Yeah. <laughs> That's scary. <laughs> Arizona's got the ball back, trailing by only a point. Field goal would win this one if they went on a sustained drive. Nothing sustained about this. DeVries, who made the big play the last time, makes another one. 
He wants to be a dominant player. He just dominated somebody because he was back there before Keith Smith could even look around. Well, back to back, he's made the two biggest plays for the Hawkeye defense. If you called that he tripped up smart on that third uh, for the third, third play, third down play before, and he comes back and gets the big sack. But again, that was defense, I think, that was looking for the bootleg that time. A good changeup from Bobby Elliott, the defensive coordinator. His older brother Darian's the starting guard on the basketball team in Northern Iowa. His sister plays volleyball at Iowa State. It's an athletic family, but DeVries with two big time athletic plays from his defensive line spot. Here comes more pressure from Ennis Inge. He almost had one. Now Smith throws on the run incomplete. Ennis Inge first chased, and then Lafleur flushed Smith out of the pocket as we check in with Adrian. Brad, I didn't ever think I'd be saying this during the game, but they're actually picking on Middleton at this point. He is playing with a sprained ligament that he re-injured at the first part of the second half here. Crowd's coming alive now, the kind of pressure they're putting on. If Iowa wins this game, obviously their defense is what will win it for them today. And Arizona has said that year in and year out. Well, whichever team wins it, their defense is going to win the game for them today. Absolutely. Eight and a half minutes to play. Third down at 22. Too much time for Smith. Found his tight end. But well short of the first down. They needed 22. They got about a dozen of it back. Metzler made the catch. And Arizona will have to punt. That was as safe as you could play the zone that time. The linebackers and the secondary people were dropped very deep. Forcing, forcing Smith to throw that ball underneath, hoping for a sack, but making sure no first down. Now this obviously isn't as well as we've seen in the Iowa offense over the years play, but this may be as good a defense as I've seen him play in a while. Yeah, absolutely. I don't, I don't know if Arizona is the most talented offensive team they'll sure. face all year, but a lot of people thought Iowa's was. Peyton the kick. Nice punt. Tim Dwight with the back pedal all the way near the five. But Dwight hurdles his way out to the 23, 18-yard return with seven minutes, 39 seconds left. Now can Iowa put a drive together and just ice this thing away? We'll find out when we come back. 7.39 to go. Hawkeyes by one. I assume he's a true freshman out of Bettendorf, Iowa. Yeah, they're going to fatten him up in the weight room here. <laughs> he does have his permanent front teeth, though. Yeah, he, although he is stuck with last year's uniform. That's the, right. The feathers they, on they there. got the New Jersey's back. <laughs> <laughs> it has been tough sledding by both clubs on the ground today. Great defense by both the Wildcats and the Hawkeyes. Now 7.39 to play. Iowa clinging to a one-point lead, and they start first and ten. Their own 23-yard line. Sherman. Again, pressured. Safety valve on to Tavian Banks. Armand Williams wraps him up. 28-yard line. Pick up a five, though. Sherman has seemed confused all game. This time he dropped back in the pocket. He was looking left. And all of a sudden, he wanted to scramble out of the pocket for no apparent reason. He had good protection that time. 10 for 17, 81 yards in the game. That is a game that Matt Sherman thought he would produce much bigger numbers from. He's 10 and 4 as a starter. This is his 15th start. Second down, 5. The give to Banks. Tavian Banks battling for a first down. Forward progress will move it to the 35-yard line. And finally, the Iowa faithful can stand up and cheer about something because that's going to eat some more clock now. They don't have to give it back, they know, for at least three more plays, barring turnover. Banks, who missed five or six games last year with a injury that made Shaw the primary back is healthy this year and you can see Hayden Fry has no qualms about using this guy. Broke his left arm in the fifth game against Indiana last year. Did come back for the bowl game though. Went over 100 against Washington in the Sun Bowl. First down. Here he is again off the right side. Banks. 10-11. 16 more. First down Iowa. All he did there was break arm tackles. 
two running backs. Depth at that position is what a lot of coaches love to have. Being able to go from Shaw to Banks, two guys that can now run against tired legs on that Arizona team. You look a lot fresher, and don't be surprised now. A couple more times you'll see Shaw trot back on the field. What a nice luxury to have two guys that are pretty much interchangeable. Shaw, the starter, number five there next to Aiden Fry. Shaw's probably saying, Coach, now Tavian's got to be tired after picking up 16. <laughs> Let me go back in. And now Arizona is going to take a timeout to gather around their defensive coordinator, catch their breath with 6.13 left. Welcome back to Kinnick Stadium in Iowa City, where the Arizona defense is beginning to look tired. The defensive personnel got to bed after midnight last night. Remember the two-hour time change from Arizona. They are up before 5 o'clock this morning. That's only about four and a half hours of sleep. They've been on the field for a long time this afternoon, Brad. Adrian, you didn't get that much, and you're holding up pretty well. <laughs> that's because I calmed down in the pink, in the pink locker room. That's right. First down, Iowa. As we approach 2.30 in the Midwest. 6.13 left on the game clock. Tavian Banks has been the star of this drive. Got a pretty nice game before Mikhail Smith puts the stop on it. Coming up next Saturday, Gary and Adrian and I will handle, uh, head for a battle in the Big East. Number 15, Virginia Tech taking on Boston College. 7.30 Eastern, our primetime game. Robert Edwards and the Georgia Bulldogs trying to rebound from being shocked in their opener take on South Carolina. The college game day starts everything off 11.30 on Saturday morning. We'll keep you abreast of the scores all day long. Virginia Tech didn't lose much last year, but they did lose to Boston College, so we'll see if there's payback time coming up next Saturday. Tavian Banks has been the guy to handle it on this drive for Iowa for 22. Junior out of Bettendorf. I was kidding around that little kid with the big helmet on the sideline. This guy actually is from Bettendorf. They just like to keep giving it to him for about five and a half more minutes. Here he comes again. He's about two yards short of a first down, but he picked up five. Iowa has gone to a basically goal line short yardage look. Two tight ends in, two backs. They've got Timmy Dwight in there into the backfield, not even lined up as a flanker, and uh, now he's not even in the game. Third down and two. This might be the ball game for Arizona. Two fullbacks and two tight ends in the game with Banks. They give it to the up man, Berger. Surprise, first down. He moved from tight end last year. He did carry it 35 times last season, but I didn't think I was going to see number 85. Toting it there. How about that? Aiden Fry has built this program with the ability to use all of his talent. When he came here, he didn't have a lot, so he had to use it all. <laughs> He's gotten used to doing it, and he is not going to change his MO. Shaw is now in the game. Seventh play of the drive, and Cedric gets the call. Off the left side, give him three, maybe four, and we are closing in on four minutes remaining in the ball game. Everybody's getting tired. Linemen helping each other up. Shaw gets up with 98 yards on 19 carries. So even though Banks has done most of the damage to the Arizona defense on this drive, Cedric Shaw closing in on 100. He might get it on the next play. Now what you want to do with your Iowa is keep moving the sticks. Smith is hoping to get another chance for Arizona. And use all the clock you can. Four seconds, three seconds. Shaw. Over 100 and over the first down stick. Ball came loose at the end, but it was blown dead at the 26-yard line. So over the century mark on 20 carries for Cedric Shaw. First down, Iowa. And before the hometown crowd, Cedric Shaw is saying, OK, let's just keep on going. 3.42 left. Not a bad day. Quiet day 
by his standards sometimes. But had that one 25-yard run is really what made it possible, but he's earned every yard out here. His 14th career game of over 100 for Cedric Shaw. Absolutely a necessity now for Arizona to get a stop. One more first down in this game. Is they stay with a two tight end look. Shaw to a single setback. Up the middle this time. Right in the middle of the field as well. Let's check in with Mike Tirico. Last time I saw Barry Alvarez, he says, we got him down to 267. We asked our trainer, can we lean this guy down? They said, yeah, if we get him to 260, it's about all his body fat will take. That's how he's poured into that. Yeah, frame. until he found, finds those brats there. They might not be able to <laughs> go back up. Huh? Did they weigh him before he found the brats? Or? <laughs> Well, we'll get another timeout. Both teams will take their hats off and try to get some wind with 312 left. Gives us a chance to remind you. Race 24 of the Winston Cup season. Terry Labonte still ahead of Jeff Gordon in the overall point standings. Coming up tonight on ESPN defending champion Rusty Wallace will also be on hand for 500 laps. That's, I guess, hurricane friend permitting around the Richmond International Raceway in Richmond, Virginia. Miller 400 tonight, 730. Right here on ESPN. Could be a little slick on the track considering what's come in the wake of Hurricane Fran. Matt Reichel, he's, he's one of our scholar athletes and obviously somebody that isn't a 4 -oak cut his hair. <laughs> but most of the offensive linemen for Iowa have the same look. I noticed Ross Verba, their senior offensive left tackle. He's not only got the Mohawk thing happening, he had a V down the back too, I suppose, just for Verba. There's but, Jeremy uh, McKinney right there. Yep. Everybody's got them. They look sort of like the Road Warriors. They've been Warriors in this drive. 56 yards and nine plays. Took over at their own 23. They chewed almost four and a half minutes off the clock. And as Gary said, another first down or two. And Arizona's going to have a long flight back. Whoa. That time Berger almost lost the handle. Did almost. He's about a yard short of a first down. And now Arizona calls timeout. With 3.05 left. And we'll take a break as well. 3.05 to play. It's Iowa 21, Arizona 20. One point game. Iowa with the ball, the lead. 3.05 to go, and third down and one. And that was Arizona's final timeout, as a matter of fact. 11th play of the drive. Here they come with a run blitz. Berger, I think he got it, Gary, and if he did, that's just about it. Salomea with the tackle, but Berger, the fullback, got the first down. You know, Brett, I've often thought in this situation, I know you're going to think I'm weird here, I think Arizona should let them score now. So they got some time? Well, yeah, it would be an eight-point game then because you'd think the Hawkeyes would then kick the extra point, mm -hmm. and at least you'd have two and a half minutes to try to tie the game. Why just play defense and take the rest of the clock? I'd let them score. Be I don't only, think I'm going to argue. I can't argue with you. It'd be your only chance. I mean, why stop them here? I mean, the, the game's going to be over if you stop them. There's no more timeouts left. I've always thought you were a little bit off-center, but I agree with you. Right? You know? Yeah. I mean, by the time everybody on piles here after, you know, fourth down, I guess you're going to kick the field goal, but it's going to be less than a minute to go in the game. Your bubble's not on plumb, but I agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> At least it gives them an opportunity. As it is, Fox is going to keep on and, working and, against them. And with overtime now, you, it's the only chance you have to, to win the game. Unless you get a turnover. Yes, but that's true. You know, I was going to be definitely wrapping the football up. And Lord knows we've had enough turnovers today. Shaw slips and finds a place to land. Say that five times quick. <laughs> <laughs> One pass and 12 runs in this drive. I'm putting that in my game, my playbook now, if I ever coach. Two minutes to go in the game, down by one, you let them score. Mm -hmm. It'd be 28 to 20, and you have a chance to use two and a half minutes to try to get down, score a touchdown, and score two to tie. I bet. I like it. Do you? Yeah, I do. That's a little different. Uh, I know that. Now watch him turn it over right here and come back and <laughs> the field goal. 
I don't even see maybe Iowa doesn't even try a field goal in this situation. I know they're going to bleed the clock all the way they can. This is the 14th play of the drive. They give it to Berger again, and Berger forward progress is halted at the 10-yard line. And I guess that's the only decision left. Do you even attempt to put the thing up? I'm not sure, and they're going to have a discussion. I, I think what Iowa will do here is run the clock all the way down until there's one second and then call a timeout and discuss it. Don't forget, Residents in College Football Scoreboard Show is coming up next. As a little highlights of what Nebraska did to Michigan State and all of the rest. And we're down to the final 30 seconds of you this football game. Watch Matt Sherman take a timeout here right as that thing gets down. Locked down, four, three, two, there it is. Good quarterback. Uh, Good quarterback. That's what you got to do. Now, see, there's 20 seconds to go in the game. I don't know. They really haven't had a game end like this. I don't know if I'd risk a field goal. I really don't. No, I don't think you do either. That looks like what I was going to well, do, though. Their field goal team is I don't there. know, but if you, if you kick the field goal, though, that means a field goal doesn't beat you. You know, and... Uh, If you run this play, you're going to probably end up with 12 or 13 seconds to go in the game. Kelly Springfield players of the game in this one, as you might guess, in a defensive battle today. First from Arizona, Joe Salavea, part of that front wall that uh, did a great job today. He was the one that said, well, we may not be Desert Storm without Osborne and Brewski and those guys, but we're going to try to carry on the tradition they've started. And he was part of that group, Van Tuna, also had a great job on the front line. And from Iowa, Jared DeVries, two biggest defensive plays of the game, really. I really think he did. One of them was a sack, and the other one was on... Uh, Tripping up the quarterback. You bet. Kelly Springfield is proud to donate $1,000 to each of the school's general uh, scholarship funds on behalf of those two guys. And they're not even going to risk the field goal here, and I, that's probably what I would do. So let them score might have been their only chance. It looks good now. <laughs> I think it looked pretty good when you mentioned it. Fourth down. 20 seconds left in the ball game. I don't think they'll get cute with us and try to run around for 20 seconds either. Nope, just straight ahead. Change of possession now. And Arizona will have 18 seconds to work with offensively. Whereas the Gary Danielson theory, they would have had about two, well, uh, two minutes and 40 seconds more than that. Watch him hit a home run ball kick. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know that's what they're going to load up. Keith Smith. I still, think, I still think that Iowa had the right strategy there. Yeah, it's just too risky to have a field goal block to have somebody run at the length of the field. Hayden Fry knows that. Iowa, though, held the ball for 15 plays in 7 minutes and 21 seconds. And they left. And I, and I don't see Cordell Stewart playing for no. Arizona right now. And they left Arizona probably two offensive plays here. Smith from his own goal line. And DeVries chasing again. Throws on the run, completes it to Dice. Dice trying to get out of bounds and does. Near the first down marker, that's academic. Pick up. Out to the 20-yard line, and now 11 seconds, all that remain. Well, Iowa survives, I think. And going into this game, in fact, when we talked to Dick Tony, I said, is Iowa that good? You know, they beat Washington as you say, I hope not. <laughs> they would have to pick up about 45 yards on this trips to the left side pass to give Peyton a chance. And they also have to get out of bounds, obviously. They're out of timeouts. Well, Just going to hang one up. First down would stop the clock, remember. Hangs one up. Man is there. It is almost intercepted, but yet almost caught by Ron Holmes. Wow. Were there some people holding their breath on that one? Knocked that thing down at the defense. Oh, man. Yeah. No. Iowa did not outnumber this play. The ball was just up for grabs. Plez Atkins made a play, and everybody likes those stats at the end of the game. That's what you take advantage of if you're on offense, is hopefully one of those guys on defense will want to end up the game catching it, and your guy can out jump them. How many interceptions did you throw on the final play of a half or a game in your career? Do you have any stat for that? All but one. All but one. I thought it was something like a high percentage. Yeah, yeah. Out of the 73 I threw, 72 were on that last.
last play. Last play of the game, barring a miracle, Iowa will be 1-0, Arizona will be 1-1. Smith loads it, goes the same way. Just make the tackle now. And almost intercepted again. Iowa survives a scare from the Wildcats of the Pac-10. Don't forget, the residents in college scoreboards coming up next for Gary Danielson, Adrian Karsten, our entire ESPN crew. Brad Ness was saying so long. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Iowa survives 21 to 20. Hayden Fry over Dick Tomey. Now let's send it back to ESPN and Chris Fowler.